Having arrived and a quorum being present, present, I uh, call to order the uh, March 13, 2019 meeting of the <coughs> North Community Preservation Committee. Um, thank you for all for coming. Thank you all for coming. Um, tonight we're having a public hearing. We're at the Norwood Police and Fire Public Safety Building. Um, beautiful building. It's ADA compliant and ADA accessible. Um, I'm not sure who the ADA officer of this building is, but certainly uh, if anyone has any questions relative to that, they can contact Bernie Cooper at Town Hall or contact myself relative to our meetings. Um, all of our meetings, luckily, are uh, covered by um, not only Norwood Community Medi Media, NCM, and also the Norwood Record is um, typically with us, so thank you very much to both of you. Um, we, uh, we do survive and thrive on feedback and input and suggestions, so um, we'd certainly welcome uh, recommendations, feedback, questions from the uh, viewing audience in the World Wide Web, wherever, whichever corner of the world you're at. Um, so without further ado, um, we do have an agenda tonight in addition to this being a regularly scheduled committee meeting. Um, we've also got a public hearing at which we'll present an update on the uh, community preservation projects which have been applied for and uh, applications submitted. Um, we have met several times relative to these projects. So tonight we're basically going to try to give a, uh, we've asked all the proponents, all the applicants to join us and give basically a very quick overview of their specific project. Um, we want to leave enough time for questions from the floor, questions from the, from the committee, questions from the floor, and um, ultimately this is a precursor to the May, what we believe to be the May town meeting. Um, we're not quite sure yet if it's going to be, uh, if our uh, articles will be held, uh, presented at the May annual town meeting or at an April special town meeting, but remains to be seen. So we're going to temporarily um, skip over the first couple of items on the agenda and we're going to get right into the public hearing. Um, sure, let's uh, let's actually, good point, let's take a roll call and uh, enter and sign in. Okay? Um, and also, sorry, if you could, what board or committee you represent. Eddie Griffin, Staten Island, Council Florida. Uh, Pat Deshane, Assistant Town Planner. John Hall, Office of the Mayor. Jeff Lynch, Assistant Town Planner. John Hall, uh, at large. Joe Greeley, at, uh, also an at-large member. Cheryl Doyle, Conservation Commission. Debbie Homewood, Planning Board. Uh, Peter McFowell, member at large. Okay, great. And moving our way is... Our, <laughs> Helen, our you slap me. Perfect. Thanks, Helen. Um, we do have uh, three uh, very, uh, very brief slides as, as an overview. Um, so, uh, we've... we've um, progressed in this process, we're now uh, well, actually well over a year, I guess. Uh, it, it just seems like yesterday. We're well over a year into this uh, community preservation process. Um, we've uh, got one project underway, and um, this represents basically the, the first full round of project um, applicants and applications and proposals. Ultimately, the work that we, our, our mission basically is to present a, um, one or a series of projects to town meeting. Ultimately, town meeting is the uh, deciding body uh, that decides on uh, whether or not to move forward with a project and to fund it. Um, just a brief overview up on the screen. Um, basically, the Community Preservation Act was uh, created and voted by the uh, state of Massachusetts in the year 2000. Um, Norwood adopted that um, act uh, 2017, and it went into effect during FY18. So we're now uh, in 2000, FY19, um, and we're talking about projects that will be um, proposed and um, put into play in FY20, 2020. Um, just as a re reminder to folks, um, on average, we collect roughly $600,000 in revenue per year, and that all comes in through uh, taxation. It appears on people's tax bill as a separate line item that's identified as Community Preservation, uh, or Community Preservation Act, I guess. Uh, but it is a separate line on your tax bills. Um, in addition to the roughly 600000 that we accumulate over the course of the year in tax revenue, um, in 2019, we were the recipients of 100, roughly $115,000 uh, in state grant, state match money. Um, once we collect that, um, 
That money, uh, we're required by the state statute to dedicate 10% of our revenue to historical projects, historical uh, uh, projects of historical uh, uh, significance in the town of Norwood. Uh, another 10% is dedicated to housing projects. Another 10% is dedicated to open space and recreational use of land. So those two headings basically split another 10%. 5% of the revenue is dedicated toward it, towards administrative expenses, and we can, we can touch base on what the examples of those are, but they could be like legal expenses or um, any kind of filing fees that the commission has to, uh, has to also has to submit. Um, and then ultimately the remaining funds stay in what's called a un general unallocated pool of funds. Um, the use of those funds, uh, the overall funds, have to be in compliance and have to be in accordance with uh, the the uh, statute set, set out by the Community Preservation Act. So we're, we are restricted in the use of those funds. Um, the funds cannot be, uh, this question comes up you know, several times, whether or not those funds can also be used for operational money, um, things like the override and schools or general government, uh, and the answer is absolutely not. They're dedicated to specific uses and applications. So um, what we're gonna see tonight is uh, four great uh, possible uses for those funds. Um, so the second slide, if you could, Pat, thank you. Um, <coughs> excuse me, the second slide is what we're trying to accomplish uh, to basically Norwoodize, if you will, or make this, make this, ad, make this process relevant to the town of Norwood. Um, we've, um, we've, we're trying to accomplish three different things uh, as we evaluate these projects. The first, um, uh, the first requirement that we've put out to all of our applicants is that um, th we would prefer, um, we not prefer, but we require that the project have specific benefits to the community of Norwood, whether it's housing, historic, or open space and recreation. So there's a, there's a one, basically one third of the requirement is that it has to have a specific benefit to the community. The second, uh, uh, measurement is whether or not we can tie in a couple of those um, three prongs essentially um, we would we would give extra credit if you will to a project that benefits both housing and historical purposes for instance or historical and like the Carillon for instance uh, the Carillon project but certainly a project that would benefit both the I don't know, it could be uh, recreational use and housing, if, there, if we could identify a, a project that spanned both of those um, areas, then we would certainly give more additional credit to that project. And then obviously the, the, the key is that a project has to be uh, well thought out, has to be detailed, and the costs and the specifics of that project have to be obvious and presented in such a way that uh, they're easily understood and easily followed and ultimately that the applicant has given a lot of good, you know, um, you know, this, it's a well laid out plan essentially is what is being presented. Um, so that's what we're trying to accomplish. Um, thirdly, uh, just a kind of a snapshot on where we are um, relative to funds. Um, at the end, since Norwood adopted the Community Preservation Act in 2018, uh, we've now accumulated funds in FY18 and FY19, and we're about to we're about to uh, turn the corner into FY20. So at the during FY20, we'll essentially have three years worth of collections. So we'll have something in the neighborhood of about 1.8, 1.9 million dollars. Um, the bottom, hopefully you can read that, but um, in the bottom, your bottom left hand corner, we've collected, including 2019, I'm sorry, including 2020, we will have collected receipts of roughly $1.9 million. It says $1.894 million. Um, we've already funded the St. Gabriel's Chapel project, so that's $400,000 that has come out of the, the available pot of funds. Um, and what, what is before us tonight, um, there are four projects, all of whom uh, accumulate to just shy of $500,000 worth of projects. So there's roughly $900,000 between, between the four projects we'll talk about tonight and the, uh, and the chapel project. So that leaves us roughly with just under a million dollars in available funds 
um, assuming, you know, assuming that these four projects are uh, accepted and uh, uh, adopted by town meeting. So, um, so, you know, that's basically what we have to work with. Um, all of this will be presented in further detail at town meeting uh, next month. So without, uh, without further ado, um, I think, and we will try to have a period for questions and answers uh, at the end of the presentation. So without further ado, uh, I think we're going to hear from the town. For the record, this is the first committee that most of us have been on that's ever had any money. <laughs> it's remarkable. <laughs> it is so different. Right? It's a totally new concept to have the funds. Yes, thank you. Thanks, Helen. Not, it's not quite free money. People have to work for it. No, but we have it to spend. Absolutely. That's good. So if you could um, just identify yourself, uh, what other either entities or individuals are involved in the project, and um, have at it, please. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chairman. My name is Lee Leach, and I am the one of the town care owners. Uh, I say one because, well, I used to be the town care owner. Now there are several others, and there's at least one other resident in town that plays, and many other individuals uh, in our extended community of metropolitan Massachusetts, Boston area that uh, does play, and we're, we do have another player here, that's Thomas Lee. He, he, he is uh, uh, also a very, very fine uh, player, um, certified, uh, has gone to uh, the worldwide renowned uh, Carillon School in Belgium. And, uh, and uh, it, 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 you probably have heard him and not known you've heard him because he's, he's a fine, very fine player. And, um, th and I do get a lot of feedback from residents who, said, who ask me who is playing on Thursday mornings, and that's usually Thomas who comes and plays when he, when he comes to practice. So welcome, Thomas. Um, You're still our favorite. <laughs> 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 um, so I'm just going to run through these slides very quickly. Um, the uh, uh, project we propose to you is a restoration of the carillon itself as the instrument. You, many residents recall that several years ago there was significant work done on the building which also included the tower. At that time there was no work done on the instrument itself. And, and um, so there, uh, there is a, a, a need for the instrument to be um, uh, worked on in terms of, of a number of areas that have been uh, neglected over the years. But um, go ahead, the next slide. The, um, just to give you a little bit of background, the uh, Carillon was uh, dedicated in 1928, making it a little over 90 years old. Um, there was a, uh, a bit of work done in the mid-80s before my time that was uh, a result of the fact that for about 10 or 12 years before that, it was virtually unplayable, as I understand it, uh, through neglect and lack of maintenance. Uh, after this work that was done in 19, uh, that was completed in 1984, um, there was a maintenance program put in place that our assistant town manager, Bernard Cooper, was very instrumental in, in doing that and uh, also continuing that on an annual basis. So uh, fortunately, what happened to the Carillon in the, uh, in the 50 years or so after it was installed uh, with no maintenance or, or attention has been addressed so that it continues to be played, but yet there are still other aspects of it that have not been addressed since then. Um, and we'll get into those. Um, the Carillon itself uh, actually gets played a lot more now than it did even before I came in the mid-90s because um, there is an interest in uh, people coming to play it for the community <coughs> and um, and uh, also, it's become sort of an integral part in a lot of local um, activities, such as um, the farmer's market or parades and such as that. 
Um, going forward, our, um, our town is, is coming up to its 150th anniversary in a few years, 2022. And we want to set up this instrument so it, is, um, uh, it, can, it can be sustained beyond that as well and become part of that, um, of that, of that uh, town-wide celebration. Um, and uh, the, the work that we are proposing to do will, um, will, 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 will satisfy that need. To do this work, we're probably going to have to experience some time when it's not going to be, be pl played because there'll be some parts of it that'll be disassembled. And we'll get into that in the, in the uh, schedule. Go ahead, uh, Patrick. So the goals of the project um, is that the instrument is, a, is, fairly, is really well known as a high quality bell sounding instrument. There are a number of other carillons um, as many as 175, 180 in the United States. Uh, many other people have played those instruments, including Thomas and myself. And these set of bells are really exceptional in, in that experience. Would you agree, Thomas? Yeah. Um, so we want to preserve that. And we want to preserve the bells themselves. And um, this work really doesn't um, do, uh, there's no, no as really no aspect of this, of this work that's actually going to be on the bells specifically. It's really the components around the bells and the, and the transmission. So um, one of the goals, uh, beside, uh, be uh, an addition would be to, um, you know, after the work is done, that the bell sound is, is as good and as fine as it is now so that we won't really change the characteristics of the, of the sounds of the bells coming out of it. Um, so that, uh, there, are, there are other elements of the instrument, as, as I described, that we will have to replace, though. And um, go ahead with the next slide, then. Um, so what, is it, what does that mean? Uh, well, first of all, if you're working on the, the most of this work is going to be up in the bell frame itself which is outside and exposed to the elements. So if we're going to be working on clappers and transmission wires and things like that, there's a, an opportunity as this work is being done to also paint the frame, which has not been painted since the 80s when that work was done back and uh, finished in 1984. There's lots of rust on it, uh, and um, so when we, when we uh, get into working on the bells themselves, there's an opportunity there to uh, isolate the bells from um, effects of sanding, whatever it is, sandblasting, cleaning up the rust, and then painting the, the metal around the bells. Um, the clappers on many of the bells are fairly worn, so we're looking at actually putting in uh, new clappers with uh, uh, um, that, uh, that, that would represent a significant amount of foundry work. So that's why I'm saying that at some point the instrument's probably going to be out of service for some time. Okay? Um, new guide wires, boards, counter springs, turnbuckles. The turnbuckles uh, and the pedal board and the felts are all uh, parts of the instrument that are down in the inside of the, of the tower below the bell frame, and those also are, are um, elements that can warm. You can sort of think of it as, uh, um, you know, components that, that uh, you know, like in your car, brake pads or whatever, they do wear, and, they, and so they, they would need to also be addressed. Patrick. So what's our game plan? The game plan is, uh, at this time, we have done some initial, initial sort of scoping out of, 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 the, of the project, and that's what I based what I've just talked about on. Um, but it definitely needs to be you know, fleshed out in greater detail as to what exactly is going to be done up there, okay? Um, we'll need a local project manager, either myself or some other designate that, that can uh, you know, manage that. Um, 
and uh, then we'll go through and uh, working with uh, you know some some other people uh, as well draw up a, a detailed scope of work and a set of timelines uh, on it. One of the, uh, this is a very specialized instrument and um, so we've been working with, uh, in the past with other um, Bell founders who do maintain this. So I, I have uh, had a lot of experience talking, both Bernie and I, talking with other Bell founders. There's not a lot of them, there's maybe four or five that we're aware of in, in the country, uh, or in the world, actually, because the, currently we use a, a fellow who comes to us from Virginia. He's relatively new. He's been in business maybe five or six years now, I think. Um, but the nice thing about that is that he can get here very quickly. Other people we've used have been uh, in England. They're the ones that completed the work in 1984. So, um, you know, it, it's, it's a fairly specialized uh, work on the belts themselves. What isn't so specialized is the painting of the frame. And so we would have to um, investigate more local um, you know, contractors for that specific work. So um, this is a slide that sort of goes through, in our minds, Bernie and I, we've, worked, we've talked about this a lot. Um, the, there is a significant activity of the, of the bells during the summertime, which is focused around our, our former summer series. Uh, that begins in June, end of June, goes through the middle of August. During that, and also there's other activities around uh, playing. Um, school groups come, there's a uh, farmer's market. There's, uh, so the, 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 the carillon is actually played for the most part mostly in, during the summertime. Um, and so <coughs> if you want to sort of put this in a, in a concept where we want to get through that period before we do significant work on the instrument, which might impact it being offline. So what would that work be? Obviously, the, the design, the you know, defining of the you know, details around the scope of work and that, and, and surveying of that. Some of that, uh, we can talk to the person, this, this uh, bell founder from Virginia that, that does our maintenance. Um, and he could, he, he's been working with us in terms of getting our initial estimates. So that has sort of been done on a you know, pro bono basis on his, his part. If, if he does um, uh, it, you know, have any uh, Cost, then we, we can work with uh, with the town uh, and the budget, the Carolina budget, to make sure that gets covered. Uh, in terms of this project, I know it starts. It would start, and at the beginning of the fiscal year, in July, we probably wouldn't be starting any significant work on it before the end of our series in mid August. At which point, um, on-site work that could be done then to set up for the painting, which would be the first real big uh, part, of our, part of the project. Painting might take as much as two or three weeks. Uh, could be done before the, you know, the weather, the cold, the cold weather sits in for the winter. Um, so that's why I put the October time frame. It could be done in September if, if we're early. You know, it, it's pretty flexible that way. If, um, if that needs to be pushed into the spring, it's even right now it's too cold to do that. It would really push it up towards the um, opening of the next summer series. It's probably too close to doing the painting in the spring. In the spring, but we'd have to work that those kinds of details out as we go forward on this project. Um, so the instrument would probably be, like I said, offline when clappers are or out of the instrument or other elements of the transmission um, that the clapper work would have to be done at the foundry if there's any recasting or reshaping of, of, the, of the worn clappers. Um, all that has to be uh, you know, sorted out. So that's why I put the, the uh, foundry work in the, in the winter. Um, 
And then once all that's completed and you know, the better weather comes to do the site work and uh, they can be um, basically put back together. At this point, we're not talking about um, moving bells off-site off to the boundary or anything like that, which would make it easier, okay? Um, so the overview, uh, these are the areas that, uh, in a broad sense, that uh, we've sort of fleshed out pricing for base, that to base our, our, uh, our grant uh, numbers on. Um, you might take a notice of the photo up on the top that um, that um, structural member you can see has a lot of, lot of rust on it. Um, and then um, this is sort of a picture of a technician um, doing some work on a pedal board um, for the, for the uh, pedal board uh, work there. Okay, go ahead. And um, these numbers are what we currently are showing. Um, as you see, the, the, the bell uh, frame uh, numbers and the clappers are, are, is, is the most significant with, uh, with the counter springs coming in through. Counter springs were replaced in the 84 um, work, but they are very, very worn. And um, uh, we've already had, in my experience, had, had some broken counter springs up there that we've had to replace. So that, that definitely needs to be part of the scope of the project. Um, from a community perspective, a town perspective, these are um, just going through. Uh, I did a quick estimate, the number of times the instrument is, is played on an annual basis. Um, I, uh, you know, back of the envelope kind of calculation, 60 to 75 times a year it's being played. So it's being played there. Here we have. Uh, I don't know if you remember our friends from uh, Singapore and Thailand in the middle picture, um, back in bank, um, school groups, and uh, uh, other Carolinas uh, and, and uh, dignitaries on the bottom picture there. Go ahead. So uh, just in summary, uh, it is a traditional carillon, which makes it a fairly rare instrument. Like I said, less than 200 in the United States. Um, there, um, you know, it's 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 in virtually original condition. We're not going to significantly change the design elements in it. We uh, will replace the worn elements. Um, they. Uh, as far as we know, uh, I'm pretty sure this is pretty accurate. Norwood has the only carillon in a town hall. There is another carillon in Albany, but that's a city hall. So, <laughs> and uh, just so there you go. Give you a chance. That's our. That's my last slide. So, do you have any questions or anybody? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Good. Can I have a couple of quick ones? Sure. Um, an observation. I'd love to like keep a, an old one of the old clappers on display down below, like in the case or something, because I don't even know what they look like until you showed the picture. Um, so this is a clapper right here with well, the. I know that, yeah. but if you're going to build new ones, maybe we could have an old one. Sure. Just for and if we could get it filmed during the process, I think that would be a fascinating thing to watch, <laughs> and then people that are spending their CPA tax dollars on it. Might get Excellent. a little more vested. Um, and do we need pointing where the steel girders hook in to the inside of the brick? Is the because he was the inside done when we pointed the outside? We hope not. We did not take the inside um, brickwork into account. Um, that's beyond the scope of this project. Okay. So yeah, we don't have any reason to believe that we have a major problem. Okay, and just to request, going up the the picture with the kids going up the stairs. Could we could we throw in a couple of dollars for some paint and paint those stairs and maybe get rid of the boxes? 
Well, I mean, the stairs, I know they're just dirty and unpainted, but, you know, I've gone up there with people and it's like, are these safe? Well, they need painting. The, the stairs seem to be very safe, but I, I know yeah, what your it's concern just, is there's, um, there's, it is a dusty environment. It's not, and, you know, yeah. just, so. well, we're, we're going this far, and maybe we could get rid of the boxes that are packed on. Sounds like a volunteer project right there. <laughs> I got a two-wheeler. John's going to help me. <laughs> Anyone else have comments, questions, relative? Yes. Oh, I just have a couple comments. Can could anyone you, hear me? Or can yeah. Do you mind? Uh, could do you mind standing uh, and identifying yourself too? Oh, sure. Uh, Roy Mopella, 44, with a lock in the wall. Nice to see some familiar faces. Glad you're running again. Um, I think there is a housing um, influence of this grant, the uh, mega complex over on Plimpton, the only sound those residents will hear will be the heating and cooling elements off of Shaw's roof, the train, <laughs> if these bells aren't maintained properly. So imagine this grant not going through. I think this cherished uh, Carillon deserves uh, normal maintenance, and thank you for describing it well. So. My housing thought is that they'll benefit from the investment that will go into um, caring for this cherished uh, treasure of Norwood on the National Register of Historic Places. Also, uh, and briefly, you know, shopping in Norwood Center is so important um, and seeing the theater goers uh, come and go. They're going to stay in Norwood longer, as well as residents, if the continued care of these uh, bells continues. So uh, thank you for describing this grant, and uh, you know I wholeheartedly support it. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Sure. I just I just have one question. After say it gets all through town meeting, the whole nine yards, it gets all restored and everything. Do you guys have a plan then, like? Um, a preventive maintenance plan set up to take care of it then moving forward once this is done? So just to frame it, I, I, I work with Bernie. I, I'm <coughs> often doing uh, the, the carol on playing and the artistic side. Ber if it wasn't for Bernie, we really wouldn't have this, this instrument because he's been supporting it from an administrative side for uh, for all that time since the, since he's been in town, so never mind how many years. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, the answer is yes. Um, part of our annual budget, uh, which really has changed a great deal in a few years, does include a line item for maintenance. Okay. And uh, we intend to continue that uh, because, as uh, Lee indicated, when I first came, the, the instrument had fallen into disuse, and you could make noise with it, you could bang it, but it was very it was difficult to play. It was really not playable because it hadn't been maintained over the previous 15 to 20 years. Thank you. Good. Thank you. Um, further comments, questions? Yes. Oh. Judith? Judith? <coughs> Thank you, Judith Howard, town member, District 3. I am so in favor of this. Uh, project, I'm behind it 100%, 1,000%. It is just a wonderful thing, and even to prove it, Ted Reinstein from Chronicle came out <coughs> and uh, interviewed Lee, and he presented a segment on Chronicle, and that was repeated. So you can imagine the importance of this project. So thank you so much. Thank you, too, Bernie. We'll jump behind it, too. Good. Thank you. All right. Thank you. All right. Um, very good. Thank you. Thank Lee, you. Thank you, Bernie. Appreciate it. Um, the next time, uh, uh, actually, one more question. So if anyone wanted to see the carillon and better get a better understanding of it, how would they do that? So just uh, contact the town hall general manager's office through the general uh, number. Uh, and um, I take people up all the time, so I'm always in town. Okay, okay great, thank you. Or you could uh, even even on weekends if possible. Okay, great. Or you can Google uh, Norwood Carillon. 
and such a, a number of U YouTube uh, items will come up. Really? Really? Yes. Yep. Really? Uh, I know the committee had originally planned to do a Carillon tour, um, and we got that delayed a little bit. So I don't know if it's something that you want to talk about, that the committee want to discuss for our yeah, next we, meeting. We, we will. To do it sure. Good. Good idea. We will try to do that before. Yeah, uh, I've been in contact meeting. with Patrick on that particular mm -hmm. issue. So okay. Great. You're available, and the Carillon's not going anywhere. We don't want to schedule that now. So we can announce it. No. Do, do we take motions now about the project? Is that the next procedure? Um, no. In the, since this is a public hearing, we'll we'll take at motions at a later time. Yes. At the end. I thought uh, we did that. We're probably well, we probably actually already did it. We do that yeah. when we put them on at our last meeting. We did it. We talked about it at our last meeting. We're going to vote but, our, vote on them again at our next meeting. As far as, our next meeting. As far as funding and okay. Uh, acceptance of them. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Um, okay, moving right along. So uh, the next project up is the Lower Pond Pavilion. <clears throat> Hello, Amanda. Hello. Welcome. Everyone ready? Ready. All right. Well, thank you very much for having me here tonight to explain uh, the project that we're presenting uh, to your board. Uh, thank you, Chairman Grilly. Sure. Um, and it you, is the. And you, you are just. Oh, we, sorry, Ramonda Morgan. I am the secretary for the Conservation Commission. I am here representing the commission uh, for this project. Thanks, Ramonda. Yep. Thank you. Uh, so you can go to the next slide. Thanks. Um, we had proposed a pavilion. Uh, it's a rather large pavilion uh, to be placed at the Alviso Lower Pond uh, property, which is across the street from the Ellis Pond uh, and the Ellis Pond Dam. Um, we feel it's a very undeveloped uh, green space that we would like to see utilized more um, by the residents of Norwood. Um, we're hoping to create what is a pocket kind of park. Uh, and a pocket park is something that people usually use like abandoned lots or irregular shaped uh, spaces to create like a small kind of quaint type of park for people, residents all to go to and um, utilize. So we have several other features on the property. Um, there is the uh, butterfly garden which was started by two of our members several years ago. We recently expanded it last year um, to basically double in size. So we have that. Uh, Haas Brook which is very uh, picturesque um, kind of flows through the back um, behind the property, so it's really nice. We have benches, picnic areas out there now. Uh, here is to show you where the location of the property is. Um, it's There are two parcels, and one fronts on Walpole Street, and the other one fronts on Endicott Street. Um, if you're really not sure where it's at, it's right across from the Big Y um, and down uh, Endicott Street where the new um, a large condo development is. Uh, so there are a lot of shops down there on the end at 61 Endicott as well. And here is more of a zoomed in um, aerial shot showing the two parcels that make up the Alaviso and Lower Pond Park. Um, we're proposing to have a pavilion. You can see it there in pink. Uh, it will have a uh, concrete slab uh, below it. It will also have a concrete um, walkway approximately five to six feet wide. And then we're also proposing uh, to add six parking spots um, so that we can have uh, off-street parking so we won't be uh, too much of an impact for people who live on Endicott Street. Um, we feel that while the pavilion will be a walkable, accessible feature for that area, we know that people will be coming in from other parts of the town, so we want to make sure there is parking. Uh, four of the spots will be uh, regular parking spots, and two will be designated for handicap uh, accessible parking. Uh, this is what the um, pavilion looks like out of the box, per se. Um, there will be a slab of concrete, um, which will be approximately 24 by 34 feet. Um, the pavilion itself is a 20 by 30 foot structure. Uh, it will have six posts. Um, within the um, concrete slab, we will have um, two electrical conduits in case we want to offer uh, expansion for lighting or um, outlets. Um, this is after speaking with your board and getting feedback from you, uh, speaking with the building inspector and also with Jimmy Collins from the light department. 
Uh, we also talked to the vendor uh, about getting a pre-wire package built into the um, pavilion. It will be installed in one of the um, columns. It will be hidden from the public. No one will be able to access it. They won't even know it's there. But it will allow us to tie in if we ever want to have um, electrical out, you know, brought to the property because you have to kind of trench it in from the middle of the park and it's a little bit of work. So if you ever want to do that, uh, the come through the conduits and having the um, pre-wiring done, we won't have to take apart the pavilion to allow the electricity to be put in. Um, actually, can you go back? Um, so the structure itself, um, it comes with architectural shingles, which are a 30-year warranty. Uh, it also comes with a 10-year structural warranty. Uh, we would have all the work done by the vendor, which is the barnyard. Um, they do all the setup. Once the slab is put down, they do everything. Um, there is a lead time from once the slab is put down, about approximately two to three weeks from when we order to when they can make it out to the site, and everything is done in one day. So this won't be multiple days of them constructing this, this pavilion. It will all be done in one day. Uh, we will also be using um, some of the 88 uh, picnic tables. They're eight feet long. They seat um, eight people each, and then two people, if they have um, wheelchairs or mobility devices, can sit on the ends. So it fits about 40 people under there, but the seating for about 20 people. Um, so this is where we get into the nitty gritty, <laughs> where we're asking for the money. Uh, we have the pavilion pricing. Uh, with everything added on, including the additional um, pre-wiring pre of the electrical, which is about $250 more, the total cost for the pavilion itself is roughly about $39,700. Uh, the concrete work is about another $3,000. Um, we will be having solar lighting right now. Um, obviously, we, we talked to the police department and got their feedback. Um, while there is lighting on the street um, and there is one light in the middle of the park, um, they had asked, expressed interest in having uh, additional lighting as well as the feedback we got from the board before. So we will be purchasing from our regular conservation maintenance budget um, to pay for the solar lighting. It's actually very inexpensive. We can buy um, a solar panel. Um, it's a small solar panel with the lights and motion center activated so it won't be on all night. Um, only when people go under the gazebo with the light turn on to allow the police to see underneath if someone is under there. Um, so we'll be purchasing that from Home Depot from a separate funding. Uh, the picnic tables we already own. We actually have a spare one uh, at the DPW, and we have several on the site already. So once the concrete is down, we can have those picnic tables, which have already been paid for, installed under the pavilion. Um, and we're going to make it so that they're removable. So if people want to use the pavilion and not have the picnic tables, and they want to reserve it, um, which will be another option that we'll be having, um, we can remove them so that more people will be able to walk around the space. We will also be adding, uh, to make it more beautiful, uh, planters and landscaping around the pavilion. Uh, that again will be something that we come from our regular maintenance budget um, because we have accounts with um, Home Depot and Lovell, so we'll be purchasing planters and, and landscaping things like flowers and things like that. Uh, probably once everything is all set up and constructed, because we don't want it to get damaged, obviously, when they're trying to install concrete or put up the building. So, next slide. And this is the rendering of what it will look like. Um, the parking will be installed right now. We have some boulders. They'll be pushed back approximately 10 feet. Uh, we'll be putting down crushed stone, and you can see this is where the concrete pathway will lead from the parking area right to the gazebo, and then we plan on having um, the planters and different types of flowers around to, to make it more attractive. Um, and you can see at the top where the solar panel will go on, so that way that the lighting will be uh, available. So, and basically that is it. Okay, great. Thanks, Roberta. Thank you. Uh, questions from the board? Comments? Debbie? Be quiet, you. <laughs> Is that gravel where the cars are parked? Uh, we have stone dust. Good. Thank you. Okay, good. Questions? Very pretty. Oh, not? sorry. Helen? Thank you for putting the walk in. That will be better for people with wheelchairs. Yes, yes. Excellent. 
Yeah, we talked with um, Mark Schubert, and uh, he looked into the gallery. We, we thought about doing crushed stone. We thought that would be better. Um, but he said, no, in order for it to be ADA, we, we had to have um, a smooth surface for people to get to the pavilion. Um, so we wanted to make sure that that was done. Correctly. Thank you. Great. John? <coughs> Looking at this picture here, maybe it's the angle, maybe it's the artist's rendering, but it kind of looks like it's starting to tip over. That's the artist's rendering. I think it's oh, your angle. Oh, Vicky. <laughs> yeah, sure. Yeah. It's your well, angle. You know, when, you get, angle. when you get free renderings, I mean, this is kind of what you get. <laughs> so. Fair enough. Okay. Uh, I did have one other comment. Um, this is really about the first two presenters. I, I wanted to compliment you both because um, <clears throat> you came in with, with good, strong proposals and you made them better uh, by responding to our questions and our suggestions. Um, there are a lot of the details you see here and that you saw in Lee's presentation that would not have been as clear or even there if you'd seen the original presentations and they're all in the direction of making it a more complete finished proposal. And that's a reason why I think the, the people of Norwood can be very pleased with the way this first year of CPC is going. Well, I do have to True. say that, you know, we appreciate your feedback because it did, you know, make us look a little bit deeper into some more details and to get that information. And honestly, you guys do represent, you know, you know, the public. So if you guys are not happy with it and you have more questions, I know the public will have more questions. So mm -hmm. we, we did listen and we want to make it um, as nice as possible for everybody. And again, with the future expansion, if we want to have the electrical outlets and things like that, we want to make sure that we cover all our bases with that as well. Great. Um, Ramonda, uh, mm -hmm. we knew you in one respect, and working for the town, this is a whole new respect of knowing you. This, you should do this more often. Good job. Thank you. And just, just a point to, to, to piggyback on something John said, but um, these projects have truly evolved, and I would assume that between now and, well, there's a couple that absolutely have to evolve, um, but it's definitely been an evolution from the first time that everybody walked in in, in front of us, um, and I think we all learned, and. Right. To your point, these projects are a lot better than they were a month ago or three months ago. Right. So thank you very much. Um, the other thing Ramonda mentioned was um, just a, a minor point, but hopefully it'll become a bigger point, is that the CPA projects, they don't have to be standalone projects, meaning that if, um, in order to accomplish the com and complete the project, funds can be pulled from other sources. In fact, would be happy to take those funds from other sources. Um, and those sources, in this case, um, the Conservation Commission has a, has a pool of funds, a revolving account, that, and, a, and an operating account where funds can be drawn to basically contribute and um, you know, essentially complement the project itself. Um, hopefully, in the not too future, dis, you know, distant future, we'll be able to um, combine Norwood CPA money with outside grant money, whether it's the, the state or some private entity. Um, we're always looking to collaborate with other uh, organizations to make, you know, to make a project even better. So, um, you know, we just to clarify, we are able to use outside funds and combine funds for a project. So. Thank you very much. Uh, further questions on this project? Yes. Uh, just a couple of thoughts. Um, um, I think there is a housing impact here as well. The many <laughs> homes that are built down this road next to the brick mill, um, many of those homes, taxpayers, don't have a backyard. So where are they to go? Well, this is a beautiful spot. So I see taxpayers. Um, seeing the rewards of their taxes and again staying in Norwood, enjoying Norwood, spending money in Norwood. Um, secondly, I manage the butterfly garden at Adams Farm in Walpole and there's a butterfly garden back there and I'd be more than happy to offer any extra plants that we have throughout the year to uh, help with this butterfly garden in Norwood. So, we'll take them. Uh, <laughs> Sold. Now, now I'm, I'm part of a board, so we, we have to pull it on. But I can assure you that uh, uh, we have a kindred spirit of uh, Walpole and Norwood. And so uh, I wanted to offer that to you. And uh, Talk to Cheryl. 
That's right. <laughs> Great, great. Thank she'll, you. She'll drive over and get them. Yeah. <laughs> Ramonda and I will be there with her in this truck. No problem. Helen? When we were talking about the butterfly got this project, over the weekend we were talking about the uh, Mona butterflies. And, and uh, so I was hurrying, so I said to my kids, I says, oh, it's like the Underground Railroad for the Mona butterflies. <laughs> and they all started, they thought it was very good. <laughs> Good, thank you, Roy. Thanks for uh, volunteering as well. We'll be up in 10 minutes. Um, <laughs> any other comments, questions from the audience? Can we have Cheryl? I just want to thank uh, Ramonda for really? doing such a great job for yeah. the Conservation Commission and for putting this together in our PowerPoint and everything, because without her, there's a lot of things we wouldn't be able to accomplish. So great. thank you on our behalf. You're welcome. Great. Thanks, Ramonda. All right. Thank, Thank you very you. much. <laughs> okay, moving right along. Um, we're going to talk about the uh, Bond Street Playground and then the Lower Balsh Rehabilitation right after that. Please. One and the same person. <laughs> How are you doing? Sir. Good evening, Travis. How are you doing? Our fearless civic leader. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, members of the board, thank you for giving me some time to come in and talk about these uh, two projects that we're pretty excited about. I am uh, Travis Farley. I'm the Recreation Director. Uh, I'll be representing the Recreation Department for these projects as well. So the first one we'll talk about is uh, the Bond Street project. It's a uh, it's a Poor rubber uh, playground and, uh, improvement that we're hoping to do at the Bond Street Playground. One of nine playgrounds that we oversee with the DPW in, in town that are separate from the schools. So the current condition right now, the playground is obviously located on Bond Street, uh, right across from Norwich Hospital. Um, it's, it's primarily wood chips and playground service currently. Uh, we actually just added three new elements to this project. So this is actually a Google Maps picture. It doesn't show the three new elements that we added. We actually extended the playground probably 10 more feet uh, where the grass area is as well. So it actually is a little bit larger than right there. I, I, we tried to look for a, a, an overview of the, the playground currently, and that was the best one that we could get. So that's the current state right now. Um, what you see right now is, is a rendering. The, the, the playground elements are not exactly where they are, but you can kind of get a good picture of what we're hoping to do. Um, the rubberized safety surface that we're hoping to install will be on the left side of the playground. It's essentially the extension area, expansion area of the playground. Um, it's about uh, 3,750 square feet. That's about 55, 75 feet um, on the left side. Um, we're going to be removing the wood chips that are currently there in the expansion area. We're going to be installing a poured uh, rubber, a poured in place rubber safety service. Um, it is um, completely environmentally friendly. Um, it's slip resistant, uh, freeze and thaw resistant. It consists of two layers. The bottom layer is a shock absorbing layer. So obviously, if anybody takes a spill on any of the elements, it'll it'll be shock shock absorbing for that. And the top layer will be a decorative layer. Um, the color can be changed to anything. Maybe we'll ask the poly, but blue seems to be the Norwood color, so we'll probably stick with that. I know Deb would probably prefer the green, but uh, we'll, we'll probably stick with the blue. Um, the, the great thing about the shock absorbing layer is that um, on the areas that are the um, highest point or might be below the main element that might be six feet, um, you can control the depth of the um, shock absorbing layer. So. If, uh, if a child were to unfortunately take a fall off the top of the uh, main element there, um, they would hopefully be a little bit better off than they would be with the current wood chips that we have in there. So that's, that's it for that slide. Um, some of our goals, obviously the first and foremost safety, but the second one is we want to make the playground more accessible for all the residents. So if you have an ADA issue, um, any issue like that, if you're a senior that wants to bring your grandchild to the park, if you're just there and you're trying to push a stroller, obviously wood chips are great um, for what they are, but um, they are not, they're very hard to navigate with a stroller or a wheelchair or a walker or a cane. Uh, it's very hard to get around on, so obviously adding this playground surface would make it a, 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 a much more accessible for everyone that wants to use it. Um, obviously you have a higher degree of safety um, with the playground. The U.S. Consumer Product Safety Commission actually has a 
public playground safety handbook. Um, and they have recommended depths. Um, they recommend that wood chips are about nine inches deep for playgrounds to absorb um, any kind of falls and anything like that. So uh, as you can imagine, with wood chips, they get hard to maintain on high traffic areas like bottom of slide, bottom of swings, with kids are running around. Um, so with nine playgrounds, and our, uh, we're, we're going crazy with pools and playgrounds and um, camp and DPWs strung out with fields. So it, it gets hard to maintain those playgrounds with wood chips and make sure that they are safety safe for the public. Obviously, adding the safety service would take care of that. We wouldn't need to worry about it. It would be safe 24-7. Um, any child were to take a fall on any of the um, area that is covered on elements or um, the, the swing set or anything like that, it would be covered, or the, the, the seesaw, my apologies. We would be covered in that respect as well. Um, another great thing is that obviously no maintenance needed. Um, with wood chips, you could be down there every other day um, trying to spread the wood chips to make sure that they are flat across the playground. Unfortunately, it's a very much an uphill battle. Um, it, it's something that it's just it's impossible to do to keep up with. So it'd be one less playground that the DPW needs to worry about and we need to worry about to make sure it's safe. Um, and the last, and this is not really a huge one, but they, it dries a lot faster. So if you have a rainy day during the summer or uh, gotta love spring in New England, if you have the snow, it melts a lot faster. So the, the playgrounds that have the wood chips, snow, rain, tend to be a lot wet, well, tend to be wetter. This, this surface will dry a lot faster. So it'll be more accessible in the springtime and then uh, and when it rains at, during the summertime. So that is some of our goals of, um, and objectives of the project. And the next slide, I kind of wanted to put, um, it is becoming more of a trend to have at least one in the community to, to make sure it's, we have at least one ADA compliant playground in, in our community. This is actually a list of, this is a, a small list that what I could gather over the last few weeks of communities that have at least one uh, poured in place uh, playground in their community, whether it's with schools or whether it's park and rec. So I wanted to make sure that people could see that, that it is becoming more of a trend um, and it would be nice to be part of that trend as well. Good. Um, this is just a financial breakdown. Um, obviously a bulk of the project would be the poured in place rubber. Um, it is a, a big upfront cost, but it'll make it up with safety and, and maintenance over time. Um, the the 67,000 uh, represents that. The 12,000 represents the rubber flex edge curving. That's basically just the perimeter of it. The chain link fence would remain. Um, this would just be below that as well. Um, and then we put a 10% contingency in, but I'm hopeful that we won't need that. Um, and that pretty much concludes the Bond Street project. Okay, great. Thank you, Travis. Uh, questions, comments, board? Peter? Uh, what's the warranty on the surface? 20 years, but most 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 make it even further than that. Uh, to be honest with you, and it is, um, and they and most of these towns have had them for at least. There's a handful that have had them for 10 plus years, and they've haven't had any issues with them, okay. barring any vandalism. Obviously, if somebody went there with a knife, unfortunately, <coughs> would have vandalized it, it would, that would be a, a circumstance. But. One of the great things for port in place as well is that you can treat it by section. If somebody were to vandalize a small section of the playground with my playground maintenance <coughs> annual budget, I could I could prevent that and I could I could repair gotcha. it as well. Good. Okay. Dave? It's not just that I don't want blue because it will stick out. It's you want gold because it really sticks out. <laughs> no, I mean six months, seven months a year, we don't have anything <coughs> green around. We defoliate. And I'm going to drive down Bond Street and see a big blue thing. We'll be like okay. the sky. <laughs> no, we don't. Yeah. Rubber. Any it's other rubber? Any any other? Uh, yes, I, I really would uh -huh. like to think about the color. Okay. And and there's no money in there for landscaping. We'll sign you. Um, we have, we, we have a, I have a playground maintenance line that if we we were to add landscaping around the chain link fence, I, I I could probably absorb that. We are actually in, not in the budget, but I can list it in there. Is going to be another walkway that's gonna lead from Bond Street directly to the Port Rubber area. I know that was a concern that the committee had last meeting, so I am gonna work with Mark Ryan in installing that. That's gonna come out of my budget, so, so the CPC doesn't need to worry about it. And the, actually, since our last meeting, I think the day after, I talked to Mark about installing a um, handicap spot closest to the par, um, playground, and that was actually installed. To Mark's credit, uh, in the DPW, they did a great job. They, I think they had it installed like the day after. So they did a great job. Uh, current, prior to that, I don't think we had any handicapped spots in that park, uh, that playground. So to Mark, hats off to Mark Ryan and the DPW department for making that happen so quickly. 
Technically, the selectmen are supposed to know about it, but that's okay. I apologize. <laughs> okay. I, I, I'm glad. <laughs> okay. John? Um, I was intrigued by your reference to vandalism. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking it might be uh, useful to that long list of towns that have already had these kinds of things call around and see if they've had any vandalism experience and what, if so, what they've done about it. And that CPSC document, I'm a big fan of CPSC, see if they have any discussion of the vandalism concern and any advice on what to do to minimize it. Yeah, no, it's, it's good thought. I think it would be in the minority, but it, it does happen. Um, it, it, like I said, it is, it is nice that you can repair a section of it. So if, unfortunately, if, if it was vandalized in a small area, you'd be able to either um, repair that small area or, or whatever you need to do. So it is, a, it is nice. But yeah, I, can def I definitely reach out to them and talk to see if, if they've had any issues with it in the past. Because it is blue and it does stick out with you. So if you were to drive by it, I can understand why you might want to do something to it. Okay. Questions, comments? Oh, nice Travis. <laughs> I don't have a gavel, so. Um, get you outside. Questions, comments from the take audience? Take a off then. <laughs> Folks? Yes, Judy? Um, that sounds like a great idea. Um, how far away is what you just put from the top lot that, that, that's there now? So the actually, all, I consider that all a tot lot. It's um, so the area would be um, it's a 50, 50 by seventy five area, fifty foot by seventy five area when you walk in the left. So when you go in the gate, there's a walkway, there's a main gate, a single gate. It would be literally just to the left of that. Um, it would encompass the main element that's in the playground. Um, it would encompass the diggers that are there. The, the there's horse there's horse uh, horse springs that are there, and then the three elements that we just installed in the rear. But if you were to walk in, there's on the right, there's two benches with a tree right in the middle. That would still remain as grass. Um, and then everything to the right would still remain as the, the sand pit for the swings. That would remain. Um, we actually, the DPW just built a brand new fire truck for the wooden element. So we'll be replacing that in the spring as well. So that is, um, that is I hope that answers your question. So are you moving your uh, no, it's all fence to the left? Oh, excuse me? Are you moving the fence to the left? No. No, we're not touching the fence. We're staying within that area. Okay, so you're staying within that fence. Yeah, within, we're staying within that fence area. That, okay. Not changing the, the perimeter of the, the fence is going to remain. We're not going, we're not expanding the playground at all. Okay. Um, we don't really have any intention to. How deep is that point, Robert? So it's going to go down four to six inches. The deep, <laughs> the areas that we consider a critical fall point, <coughs> the areas below the main element will probably be six inches, but the areas that are just be around the perimeter of the fence will probably be around four inches. So it kind of depends on where you're at in the playground. Mm -hmm. um, but it'll be between four and six inches. Okay. You're going to kill me on that. But I'm going to agree with Debbie. Because if you have it green, <laughs> it's like a smooth. Yeah. And it could be multiple colors. There, there, are, there are playgrounds that I've Rainbow. seen that have like at least two or three, four colors that have it. So it can be blue, it can be gold, it can be green, it can be a variety of different colors and shapes and circles. You could have anything you want in there. So we can, uh, I can come up with a design for the colors and then I can present it. I know we might not be meeting until the next town meeting, but I can come up with the colors, but we can, oh. okay. Uh, uh, yeah. Okay, good. Thank you. And the other thing I also agree with her on landscaping, because you're going to have landscaping, um, you know, El Abiso's property, and you can have landscaping here. So all around town, I, I'd be in favor of landscaping for all of this. One final thing, would there be room for um, children just to play softball to the left? You know? Yeah. Still the yeah, yeah, actually, I believe that used to be a ball field. Um, yes. they, 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 they took the back stuff down, and now it's just grass. So actually, when we've gone down there, I've seen kids playing catch, uh, playing soccer in that grassy area. Um, so I, I, if they, if we'd like to keep it. I mean, it, it's, it's up to the neighbors and the public, but um, if there was a need for another ball field or a soccer area there, uh, we could definitely look into it. Not, not a um, permanent thing, you mm -hmm. know, just to put Kids want to just play softball. Yeah. Just go out there and play. We used to do that. Remember Bernie? We used to go walk down here. Bernie. <laughs> Another old. <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> we will have an alumni game later. <laughs> um, Cheryl? I have a question for you. Shoot. The diggers, are they 
where the board rubbers? Yeah, so all the, I should have backed up, all okay. the elements that we currently have are going to stay, um, so the diggers will stay. Okay. Uh, Do the diggers actually dig? No. The diggers actually dig. So there's a, there's a small box oh, fence okay. that surrounds the perimeter of the digger. It's, it's like a four foot by four foot uh, raised box. And then inside that box is just sand. Um, and it, it, the diggers dig. Um, there is a spring horse that's to the left um, that we might need to remove because it's only a foot away from the fence. So if we, unfortunately if a child took a fall, mm -hmm. they would go into the fence. But that would probably be the only element that we'd, we'd look into possibly removing. Okay. But the diggers would remain. So the digger can't move to the rubber, right? It could only dig in the sand. Yeah, so we would leave those boxes and it would just be sand. And then you okay. still see a box there. And then, yeah. Love yeah. the diggers. We, well, we were thinking, well, there's your vandalism. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's a good point. If you left that digger there, which is the rubber, that's, yeah. okay. that's, that's all they're going to want to do is dig in the rubber. A few years later, we'd have a big hole in the rubber. Okay. John? Just to chime in what I hope is the last time on the color issue. <laughs> I'm, I'm on the same line with Judith and, and Debbie in the oh sense God. that it's on the ground, you're, you're sort of looking, what would you expect to see on the ground? It's green stuff. Yeah. It's the same reason I'm not excited about blue Christmas trees. <laughs> um, but I, I thought it might be useful, since this is a public hearing, we don't have a whole lot of chances for feedback. Maybe do a straw vote. Yeah. How many people in the room would prefer to have blue? <laughs> oh! <laughs> How many people would I'll prefer to have green? Okay. And how many people are okay with either? Okay. Oh, Bernie, you can't vote <laughs> twice. <laughs> He's okay with either. I, I think that's that's you. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we could we could put it up to the public. We can come up with a couple of different color designs, and we can put it out to the pu general public and have a vote. Uh, there's a couple of different ways. Green, green's great. Uh, blue is great. I'm just happy we're getting a good safety surface in there. That's going to be. Looks like green is trending. Green is trending. Oh, I like it. Would be brown. Light brown. Light brown would be a good yeah. one. So there's the other. Okay. Yeah. okay, we're going to move right along <laughs> to the uh, lower bulge rehabilitation project, please. Yes. And back again? Back again. <laughs> that was a short walk back and then back up. Um, yeah, so this was another one we're really excited about. Uh, the Elliott Park Rehab. Uh, a lot of people know it as lower bulge, but we are extremely excited about this one because this is one that um, we as a department can use quite a bit as well. So if you, uh, if you want to hit it. So this is the current state um, of the lower bulge. For those of you who don't know, the bulge is um, on um, why am I drawing a blank? Washington Street um, in South Norwood. Um, it is um, it's one of the bigger elementary schools and it's the biggest elementary school in El uh, Norwood currently. Uh, the area that we oversee is directly behind the elementary school. It's the lower area, so once you go down the, the, uh, the steps there, past the parking lot, we maintain that with the DPW. So about 20 years ago, uh, about a 90 by 100 foot area of concrete used to be an old skate park. Uh, for a couple of reasons, the town decided to, um, to no longer do the skate park. Um, the basket, there is a basketball court down there currently. It's a min the minty basketball court. It's got two benches as well. Mm -hmm. As you can see, the, the area is in rough shape. It, it, currently, doesn't, it currently doesn't have any use. Um, the schools don't use it because they're worried about safety. We do programming down there during the summer. We don't, we don't ever use it. We stick to the softball field. The PTA doesn't use it. Um, and weekends, weekends with folks that come down for the, watch the baseball games, their kids are able to use it. So it's, it's, a, it's a use that, it's a, it's a space that we're hoping to, to utilize um, with this project. Was that named after Minty Kubrick's? It was. They actually. So, sorry, go ahead. So if we did, so if whatever we do there, we have to still have it named after Minty. Yep. There's actually a sign, um, and I'm actually make, I'm hoping with my budget to make it bigger because it's it's right at mid court between the benches. It's a small sign. It's only like a 10 by 12 sign. I'd like to I'd like to spruce that up and make it a lot bigger. For those of you who didn't know him, everybody in the room did know him though. He dedicated his whole life to the youth of Norwood. Yeah, he was a great man. He had, I think, he was this single game leading score or single game, 42 points in a Nord High basketball game was his, and one of his claims of fame. He scored 42 points in a Nord High game, I believe. I could be wrong, but that's the, the legend of Minty. But one of the things, more importantly than his own expertise as an athlete, he helped thousands of kids. Yeah, he was great. He was he was a tremendous man. Uh, 
Um, so if you want to go to the next one. So a little bit about the project. Um, so we're hoping to resurface the old skate park area. Like I said, it's about a 90 by 100 foot area. Uh, right now it encompasses the, um, the soccer area that's listed up there and the um, outdoor education area. So the only thing we're going to be doing with the resurfacing is we're going to be pouring a crack filler in the current cracks that you saw in, that, in the picture of the fryer and then we're going to be resurfacing it as well. Um, we're going to be adding an outdoor soccer area, uh, more futsal area, um, and then that can actually be used as street hockey as well. So kids can go down there, play futsal, soccer, you can, you can play street hockey if you want. So it'll be a, a hopefully a utilized area. We're actually going to be adding an outdoor classroom area, um, as you can see, um, with some permanent structures um, as well. So the school can use it for outdoor education. We can use it for nature programming. Uh, the PTA can use it for after school programming. If you're in the neighborhood in South Nord and you want to go um, outside and read a book with your kids or, or, or just, do, just hang out in the outdoor classroom area, you're more than welcome to. So hopefully a lot of people would be able to use it. Um, we're hoping to rehab the fence that's around the perimeter of the skate park currently. Um, as you can see, the poles are in good shape, but it just needs to be, uh, we just need to rehab the fence around the perimeter of it. Um, we're going to resurface the minty basketball court as well. Um, right now, we're seeing some cracking around uh, the middle of the court. We're going to be replacing the two benches that are right next to the basketball court, and we're going to be adding a handicap accessible ramp um, that goes from the parking lot in the um, rear of the school down to the play area. The thought behind that is that a lot of, a lot of, if the school was to use it, they had, the kids would have to go around the um, street right next door to the uh, school. Um, we use that as a drop-off area for our programs as well. So we want to get, make sure that area is at least accessible for anybody that has a wheelchair. So that's kind of uh, the project in a nutshell. Um, I know it's a lot. It's a lot to chew on. It's a, it's a, it's a. There's a lot, a lot of elements to this, this one as well. So we're, we're excited about this project. Okay. Great, thank, thank you, Trevor. And then um, the project goals and objectives, obviously you're eliminating a unsafe play area. Um, the current area doesn't get a ton of use, so it'd be nice to spruce up that area to, make, to see, to utilize the space that, um, that the residents can use. Um, you're gonna support multiple active and passive recreation uses between the schools, other rec department, PTA, passive recreation, like I said, if you're just in the neighborhood and you want to go down and <clears throat> play some futsal or street hockey or play some basketball, it'll give you that option to do it. Um, it'll serve a significant number of residents. Um, it'll expand the recreational range of recreational opportunities to serve the, the residents as well of all ages. So if you're, it doesn't matter if you're a 40, 40 year old, 80 year old, if you want to go down and shoot baskets um, in the lower vaults, you're, you're more than welcome to. Um, and you're going to utilize, um, you're going to maximize the utility of recreational resources for the land um, already owned by Norwood as well. So Norwood owns this property. Unfortunately, it doesn't get any, a lot of use currently. If we do this project, you're going to see an immediate impact, and a lot of groups are going to um, benefit from this project as well. Um, so it, it's, it's an exciting project for that, for that reason as well. So, and then the last but not least is that if, uh, if the St. Streets are pur purchased, uh, the rehab of this area can be tied into future projects. So if you were to turn, I'm just using this as an example, but if you were to, in the St. Streets, if you were to put a nature trail back there, you could theoretically use the outdoor classroom as a, a teaching area for that, for, that, for, that, for that area as well. So you can actually tie that project into future projects for the St. Street as well. So and that's... That's, uh, that's kind of it in a nutshell. And as I, I know I kind of hit on this during my little spiel here, but the groups that would benefit from this project, and I'm sure there's more, these are the ones that I can come up with. The Vault School is obviously benefit from this. Like I said, uh, Danielle Ferrer was uh, and very uh, vocal with what she, what she needed, and I tried to get their input from the schools, from the administrators, and most importantly the kids that lived in there to see what they wanted. Um, and they, um, I tried to get their feedback on it. The Vault School. Vault School PTA uh, went to a PTA meeting, listened to them. What do they think? What do they think as a neighborhood they would like to see down there? Try to get their input. Um, so there was there was some feedback on that as well. They would benefit from this project. We do sports camps down there during the summer. Um, as a rec department, we could do nature programming down there. We do a flashlight Easter egg hunt down there. So we use that property quite a bit as a rec department. It would be nice to spruce that area up so we can start using it. Um, the neighborhood around the Balch would obviously benefit from this. So if you go down there on a Saturday or Sunday, you'd be able to use that property as in uh, the neighborhood as well. And then most, this is actually another one. If you're visiting that property from a, another town, so if there's a varsity baseball game, 
If there's a, a Legion game and a Senior Babe Ruth game, if you go down to that property and on a Saturday and Sunday in June or July, it is packed. It'd be nice to spruce up that facility so it's a, a good representation of South Nord and Nord as well. Um, so people see that and they say, wow, that's a nice facility. It'd be nice to spruce that up as well. So you see a lot of different impact. Um, this is kind of a, the financial breakdown in a nutshell. Um, the, everything I kind of touched on, the fence rehab is for 2000 You have the bench replacement would be about 1500 apiece uh, right next to the basketball court. You have the resurfacing of the basketball court, um, outdoor soccer goals, which would actually double as hockey goals as well. Um, you have the skate park area resurfacing. That's a big project. There's a, a, lot, of, a lot of cracks that we got to fill in for that. Outdoor classroom area, um, area. and then last but not least, uh, certainly handicap accessible ramp as well. And then again, uh, it's not a big project. I'm hoping we're not going to need a contingency fund. I'm pretty confident we're not going to, but I, 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 I would like to see it in there just in case we run over with anything. Sorry, I'm okay, long-winded. Sorry. <laughs> Thank you, Travis. Chair? Oh. Are you going to put any landscaping in? Because <laughs> Deb and I would like to know. <laughs> oh, yes. Jesus, throw me under the bus. <laughs> I, I, I wish I could get the render. The rendering was really hard for this one because there's, there's, there's many different um, I, had a, I, I was working with a lot of different companies. The Bond Street was easy because it's one company. They do renderings for playgrounds all the time. This one actually was a little bit harder because you're dealing with a resurfacing company for the, that. You're working with a fence company. You're working with a bench company. So there's no one company that can be rendering for this project. Um, so I actually had to meet with a couple landscape architects. Their prices were absurd for a, a rendering. And then I actually went to the DPW. So again, they bailed me out help me out uh, to make a rendering. So I, my first rendering, I actually had shrubs that, um, that lined the, the walkway to the right of the uh, basketball court and skate park. So right now there's a path that we're hoping to re rehab. Um, so the area would, once you walk down the fence near the handicap ramp and down the right, uh, there's a pathway that goes um, to the right of the um, soccer area and the um, outdoor classroom area around the perimeter of the fence that you would go to the basketball court. I'm hoping to put some, some greenage, green, greenery there when we rehab the walkway as well. And that's going to be done out of our, our playground. <laughs> <laughs> we, can, we can look at some blue paintings, blue plantings. <laughs> um, so no, we are and, and, and we are very excited about this. It's uh, something that we uh, I feel like a lot of people benefit from uh, right away. Can I follow okay, up? OK, great. Oh, sure. Oh, sure. sorry. And for like the greenery, the shrubbery, and that, do you have that in your budget? Yes. So that would be entirely out of my uh, playground oh, maintenance budget. Major, Thank my you. Maintenance budget. It is. Right. It is tough because I mean, like Davey said, when you drive by a bulk of our uh, playgrounds, like I said, we we maintain nine. The uh, chain link fence, unfortunately, is the common common recurrence. So it would be maybe a long term over a couple of years that we're able to put stuff down. But if we invest in a uh, Bond Street, for example, I'd like to see us um, put some green there as well. Green in front of the chain link Good. fence. Yeah. Double fix. Helen. Thank you. Um, for those who weren't at the other hearings, other meetings, Mr. Farley brought this project before the board previously. And at the first time that he came, the concept of the handicapped ramp wasn't included. It was included at the suggestion of Mr. McFarlane. So this is our first year, and this is our first round. And you can see how we're making the projects get better and better. Point. Right. Is there is there any lighting? Uh, no. I, I actually <laughs> talked to the police department about putting um, a security system in, um, and they had a recommendation to um, to do the pole. I forget the street that's directly behind the basketball court. Um, we were going to probably try to put a um, a camera up there out of my budget. Full uh, and air. Yeah. Sorry. Thank you. Thank you, Helen. Um, so we'll probably try to put a camera up there as well. So. Right now, there there isn't, and there isn't anything in the budget to put lighting in. Um, if there is something down the line, I can I can put something out of my budget uh, for that as well. The baseball field has lights, right? Yeah, yes. that's that's for those are on during baseball use. I, I thought you were talking about just lights. I, I did, I did, but I was thinking, why couldn't you put lights that went the other way on the same pole? At night, it's like daylight there anyway. Yes, it really. The is. whole place is all lit up <laughs> from the baseball field. Yes, yeah. Yeah. it's like daylight. Yeah, okay. there are very there. There are very rare, very rarely to go down there during spring and summer, and that field is not being used by baseball and softball um, as well. So it's. Yeah. I would have all the new lights too, right? Because didn't one of them fall down? 
Didn't we lose one in a storm a few years ago? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Place. yes. We had to replace those lights. Yes. I think. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So yeah. there's uh, thousands of dollars. Oh. Yeah. It was not the, the light project, the project. and the uh, Coatley just received uh, relatively new lights, and those are on a Musco control link. The old the old wooden poles were tough. The, the new the new system's great because you can literally call a company that's out in Iowa, and they can literally I can have the lights on in minutes. So if a game goes in extra innings or there's a rain out, you can shut the lights off. Um, for okay. just a quick phone call. It's actually a really, really neat process now. Okay, great. Um, Mr. Chairman, I have a quick question. Yeah. Uh, this location right here, I thought I'd to a classroom area. What were you thinking of doing with that? Is Thank you, Pat, for bringing that up. That's actually a good point. Uh, I should have <laughs> talked about that. So that's going to be just resurfaced concrete. I was actually going to talk to the schools and the PTA and our department to figure out if there's something neat that we can put on there, just like color, like uh, mapping the United States or tic-tac-toe, something that the kids can use as passive recreation um, or um, we can use or the school can use. So you will just resurface? It'll be just resurfaced concrete, yep. Giant chess game. Giant chess game. I, yeah, it's actually the fun, the fun part of the job. Maybe we'll ask the general public. So it's, it, it'll be it'll be something that people can use just going down there, or the school can use, or so it'll be uh, it'll be something colorful. Great, good. Thank you, Trevor. Thank you. Um, questions, <laughs> comments, uh, Judith. You, uh, you um, didn't know what happened with the skateboard. Yeah. So I'll tell you what it was. It was years and years of kids coming from the inner city, coming out for skateboarding. There were drugs there, alcohol, vandalism, and after, oh, I'd say maybe almost 10 years of complaints by the neighbors, um, the police, and they had a file like this on all the vandalism and calls of complaints. That's why the town finally um, closed the skateboard. So I'm asking you here, how close are you to the back, the neighbor's uh, you know, land? Is this close to it so that they're going to be playing basketball, they're going to be playing soccer? Also, the other kids came, and it was 7 o'clock in the morning. Sunday morning, I mean, right next to the neighbors. So I'm questioning, you know, safety, questioning how close are you to the neighbors? Um, you mean like relationship-wise or as far as proximity to the well, neighbors as far as? Right, I mean, space. I mean, are you 10 feet from the neighbors' land? Um, the no. I don't, I, I'm, I don't think we're terribly close to the neighbors right now. Um, I think the, if anyone was playing basketball, maybe six or seven in the morning, I don't think the neighbors at the end of Oakmont, um, uh, Fulham. 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 Uh, would like it very much. Um, we're actually working with the DPW to install uh, playground um, rules and regulation signs. One of them will be the uh, playgrounds open at 8 a.m. We've had issues over the last year at a couple different parks with people playing um, unpermitted um, cricket and soccer at like 6 a.m. at like, uh, so that, that, that's something I can work with the police department on um, if there are any issues in the future. Um, I'm hoping the camera, if we were installed at the end of Poland Street, will help as well if there were any vandalism um, to deter that. Have you talked with the people on Poland now? I have not talked with people in Poland. I, I, was, I, I was more, trying to figure out a useful use of the space that's not being used currently. So I was just, I, the groups that I primarily focus on is the school, PTA, the neighbor, not the neighbors, but trying to the kids that are in that that that, that section of Norwood, trying to figure out what they want, what they'd like to see down there um, for not only school use, but passive recreation use, because um, most of these kids live in those neighborhoods as well. Right, but I'm falling out, they have kids. Yeah. Some of those people have kids. Yeah, with her, I can, I can, I can, I can definitely talk to the, the some of the residents in Fulham, on Fulham Street and figure out what they would, what they would, if they would have any concerns about the project, um, to help see if there's anything that I can help to deter their concerns yeah. as well. But the, the previous uh, experience that they had was difficult, you know, very difficult. Yeah, I can totally understand. It's, it's, um, yeah, I. So I that's why I was. A, I, I think this is a wonderful idea. I really, really do. Uh, just from prior experience, 
Yeah, that conversation with the neighbors might help yeah. craft those regular rules and regulations for the for the uh, facilities. So. Yeah. Good. Okay. Thanks, you. Uh, good. Thank you. One and all. Thank you, Travis. No, appreciate thank it. You thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Um, okay. Great. Uh, moving right along. See you at the Civic, Travis. Thank you. See you tomorrow. We so, can arm wrestle on that blue uh -huh. rubber. So, so we did have. Um, so we do have two additional projects. Uh, these first four that we've just reviewed. Um, thank you all for your input and um, and the, your outline of the projects. Much appreciated. Um, we do have two other projects that we're going to speak to uh, briefly. Um, they're both in, well, I'll say they're in play, and they're not as well defined as these first four. Um, I think, Pat, do you want to start with? Uh, yeah, I don't really stand <laughs> okay. um, okay. I just want to touch on the, uh, the St. Law purchase. Um, I'm not going to go through the same presentation that Paul did uh, a few weeks earlier, but I have just an aerial showing the um, proper bounds. Um, a, I guess I would say a meeting was held between town council and legal representation for the future owners of the land. So as most of you are aware, um, there's a purchase and sale agreement between current owner uh, Bruce Comments and DCD Realty, which represents the Bach Corporation. Um, that purchase sale is kind of contingent on uh, them receiving permitting uh, from both the planning board and the conservation no. uh, okay. sorry, conservation commission. Uh, they've gone through the process of the planning board of uh, major project site plan review. Um, they, they received the permit for that. If your process is over, they are still currently meeting with the conservation commission. And um, once that process, once they, they either they've been approved, and it depends on whatever the outcome is of, of that. They have to go through the appeal process of that decision, and then once that is over, that is when the actual 18-month clock begins of when the, per the, um, the property is available um, for purchase. That purchase is not guaranteed. It was an offer to make it available to the town, so it, it's something that, um, I guess, that's why we've talked about in an executive session before. It's something that town council is discussing with um, their uh, legal team, I guess. And so right now, it's uh, still something we obviously, I, you know, like, I think we want to go forward with for um, the, uh, the annual um, for town meeting in the spring. But um, we're still kind of, there's, I guess we can't really pull the trigger just yet. So it's still kind of held up on a few other issues. Um, okay. okay. So that's, I guess, where we're at right now. And I know we wanted to have another discussion between the uh, committee and possibly an executive session with the um, town council of um, Dave Luca. That meeting, um, hopefully we can try to get that either for the 27th or before then. I haven't been in contact with Dave regarding that. Uh, I know Paul had, was at that meeting with uh, town council and um, the legal representation for DCD Realty, but um, I guess that's still being fought out right now. So. Okay, great. So it is, it is still an active project. Um, an application has been uh, presented to the Community Preservation Committee to purchase it, but um, at this point there's probably more facts that we don't know than we do know as far as purchase price, availability, timing, as Pat said, whether or not the land will even be for sale. Um, there is always that possibility. The, the, um, the applicants are in front of the Conservation Commission currently, so um, that's that that process continues as well. So yeah, I mean, I can't speak obviously for DCD Realty, but um, you know that I guess it just remains to be seen. So this is kind of an issue where it's um, it's something obviously it's been on the open space and recreation plan as a as an area to purchase. It's a um, you know be a wonderful asset to the community and to the other neighbors. But right now, you know, we're just um, we're kind of putting it in the hands of um, town council and um, as. Their, uh, the, uh, the representatives for us on this matter. Okay, great. Thank you. Questions, comments? Mm, just a lot of unknowns. Yeah. Lots yep. of unknowns, right? Right. 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 Um, but it is, as we wanted to include this project in tonight's open public hearing. Um, it is, as I said, and Pat, Pat 
as outlined, it is definitely still a, an attractive piece of property. Um, it is a project that we're um, staying very close to and uh, hopefully it'll progress. Uh, we just don't know if it's gonna progress in time for town meeting or not. So the alternative to coming in front of a spring or well, the annual town meeting is we could always um, push it and return at a fall town meeting, special town meeting or next year. So. Yeah, we could either push it to the fall, but uh, you know, there's, you know, when um, Bruce Sagnor of the coalition was in, he brought up different ways that towns deal with um, land purchasing. And so there are you know, options. potential different options with this, whether uh, we continue with what we did a uh, joint a split, a split appraisal between us and DC Realty. If DC Realty feels like they want to do their own appraisal, we could, you know, depending on what that actual number is, we just it's up to you if you felt like that was, you know, fair to go with that. Um, you could also appropriate money to put into Conservation Commission's um, Parking purchase. Yeah, right. so that'd be something where we felt like we couldn't actually make the rules available to purchase just yet, but we could plan to put it in with um, the conservation commissions. Okay, great. So. Good. Thank you, Pat. Yeah. Thanks. Um, while you're in the hot seat, maybe um, the trails design project is our sixth. Um, at this point, it's it's an active project. But do you want to speak to that? Yep. So I believe I put a memo from Paul in your packets. I didn't send that out in an email. I forgot about it. But if you recall from the um, <laughs> last meeting, Paul had um, received two uh, quotes from a, a engineering firm for doing design for, uh, projects for potential trail trails um, at the St. Lot and at the University Ave location. These, those numbers came in unreasonably high. Um, and that, you know, again, that could have been the result of just going through that one um, firm. But even so, um, Paul Akito is the director and met with Mark Ryan, uh, town engineer, <coughs> as well as Andy Murphy, um, assistant town engineer, and kind of discussed the breakdown of, his, um, of the necessary steps that go into a design, uh, a, a trail design project. Um, both, um, all three parties kind of agreed that a lot of that could be done in-house um, by the staff we have here, both uh, planning, engineering, conservation. So right now, we're still okay pulling that project completely, uh, at least for um, the spring. Uh, the same lot project, it obviously depends if we even are able to purchase the property. It's also a much more reasonable size piece of land. I mean, it's just like, you know, six point zero eight acres, so it's, it's it's a project that you know can be done fairly easily, and I don't want to you know this is just going on the other side. So that's one thing. And so if we were to go forward, um, if that land would be purchased, is something that we could go forward with first because it would be kind of that um, I guess that preliminary design project, and we could take elements off of that and base it towards the future um, University Ave trail design project. That piece of property would. Um, Again, that has you know a lot of lot to it that can be done in house, but there is some things with the University Ave because it's it's a far larger piece of property that may be a potential CPA project um, either in the fall or for next spring. But um, right now, I think just for just for the sake of just moving forward, I think it's good to just pull it from um, you know from the uh, the, uh, the spring. Okay. Good. Uh, and just to follow up on that point, I'm reading uh, last line of his. List. Yeah, Paul's. Paul, go ahead, Peter. Go well, the last line of Paul's memo is based on the, that approach that Patrick just outlined. That uh, he's formally requesting to withdraw the CPC application for the trails design. Uh, make that as a motion, we wrathfully. <laughs> okay, we have a second on that motion. I'll second it. Okay, good. Um, further discussion on that. I'm, I'm sorry. Questions or. Sure. Could I please just say this? Okay, I know it was here in the package. So this is what we got tonight, correct? Mm -hmm. yes. Correct. Okay, so um, I f I'm really disappointed that we're going to try that we're not going to try and have it done in house. Well, we are going to try to do it in house. But, but why do we have to? I know, but the university, it, we did we talk at all about University F being done in house? I think as well, um, but. 
that I wasn't at this conversation at this meeting between um, two engineers and Paul, but what I got at from Paul is that um, we would first start with the same lot as it was a smaller piece of property and something that you could you you could take design elements from that and then we could probably bring that over to University Ave. There's some things that we can't really do in house in terms of like geo mapping for the University Ave location because it's it's such a vast piece of property and so actually you know you know, scoping it out and surveying the land and finding, you know, the appropriate trails. That's something that um, we can do in-house, but it might also be something that would be preferable to do, go through an engineering firm. But the, right now, I think, you know, the opinion of, of um, you know, the two engineers and Paul is that it would be best to wait on making this any sort of project right now. But we could take, we could do in-house portions of it during the summer or in the fall, we could try to work on it that way. Pulling the project, um, the Trails Committee put so much work into trying to get trails around town, mm -hmm. and time was going by, yeah. and and uh, I really, this is a good project for the town, mm -hmm. and to pull it, I'd rather say, let's keep working on it. Oh yeah, I think I think we do want to keep working on it. I think especially what, what the Trails Committee has done, and. Um, at especially the direction of, um, you know, I'm speaking for Paul and myself and how we'd like to, you know, be a little more active in that area as well. Um, we're going to try to actively do what we can if this is something we need to bring back up for portions that we just, we do not have, you know, either the skill or the technology to do in-house, then we'd probably um, come back to the CPA. Why don't we get the Trails Committee more involved in it and rather than just take out the whole project and make them reapply? Why don't we ask them to get more involved and to try and work something out? Yeah. Rather than have them have to reapply. Mm -hmm. You know, they've done a lot of work on this already. Oh, yeah. I don't think we have to write them a memo. We'll, uh, we'll ask them to take that into <laughs> advisement. Um, thank you, thank you, Helena. The, one point, though, about the University um, University Ave project, um, it is definitely a, a a worthwhile project. It's it's probably the biggest, as far as I know. It's it's probably the biggest um, piece of property in the town. That's it's actually contiguous uh, between the portion that's owned by the light department and the conservation commission. Um, but it's over 100 acres, so it would it would be a great place to put a trail. Um, it's the closest thing to the town forest that we have. Um, unfortunately, the as Pat mentioned, the design the landscape architect. Who gave us a quote on <laughs> designing a and designing a, pro, a uh, crack. So, trail yeah. was um, was was thinking high? What was the number? It was one hundred seventy-five thousand dollars. Seventy thousand. Yeah. The design plan, not right. actually implemented. Right. Right. So that number is not something that we, we agree with. <laughs> right. Um, and obviously, timing is a little bit of an issue. We probably could have looked at maybe got quotes, but when they did it, when Paul and and Mark did kind of a breakdown of you know the list that they gave us of where they would you know where they were looking to um, I guess what would cost money what would be some of those budget items a lot of that were things that we we can just do in house they agreed that that lot with the majority of it were items that you know especially permitting especially um, surveying uh, you know both um, I know Andy Murphy is a, is a professional surveyor so a lot of those things that they charge they charge us for and that quote were things that we could have done. Anyway, so it, it's it's definitely unfortunate because I mean we, this is and I, you know Joe and um, the trails committee are definitely passionate about this, and I think we we're we're very understanding of that too, and we're passionate about trying to do something in that area as well. Years ago, when Gary Lee was on the board of Sleckman, mm -hmm. he wanted to build a trail down where the Norwood Arena was. Mm -hmm. It was nowhere as big as this University I thing, yeah. and and Mr. Halky Otis is probably very right yeah. about the. The University of is the biggest thing of all. Yeah. But what if we communicate with the Trails Committee mm -hmm. and ask them if they have a smaller project that they might have ready to go so that we could at least start small and then work up? How do we know? They might have something all lined up already. They have a really good imagination, those people. And they, <laughs> they funny would, about that. They would nothing, nothing. nothing. It's, a good, it's a good point. They, no, I'm, funny about that. I'm saying like that he, Joe is shaking his head, yeah, because the, I think, the chairman of the I think my own, my own opinion, the, what's being 
pulled here, quote unquote, what be, what's being pulled is the application that was presented to the Community Preservation Committee. That's not to say that the work won't continue, and it's not to say that we won't come back and reapply under a different a different structure, I guess. Yeah, so. I, I agree completely with what you're saying in terms of like smaller scale projects. Um, one of the things that we're learning, especially when we're, we're as we're starting to uh, finish up the updated open space and recreation plan, is um, there's a lot of things in there in terms of information, in terms of general upkeep, things that um, have not really been taken care of. Where they're very, you know, these are items that are easily done in house. And so a lot of those little things at first, in terms of just public awareness, um, I think we need to do a better job of, you know, even before getting, doing some, a, a massive project like this. And so that's definitely going to be something, um, I say this summer just because that's probably, you know, the clock resets in the fiscal year. So that's something that we hopefully try to, um, to accomplish and try to, you know, get out there um, going forward. No. Thanks. Good. Cheryl? Did you want to go first? Because your poor hand's been up there forever. I can go after you. <laughs> go ahead, John. Go. That's all right. I'll rest your hand. Um, <laughs> I think a lot of the conversation we're having here will be hard to understand for people who haven't been here through our entire process. But one point that's worth mentioning for those who don't know is that the project that's being pulled was not the first project that was submitted as a trails proposal for this cycle. Um, and uh, instead, the first project that came in was like what Helen is describing. It was an inexpensive project that would sort of get our foot in the door. But ultimately, it, uh, there were issues about how it would be accomplished and how exciting, if at all, the deliverable would be when it was completed. So with the help of some creative thinking from some other parties, we had the second project proposal, which is the one we're talking about now. Mm -hmm. And that one blew up for the reasons that Patrick has stated, because when we asked people what it would cost to do the whole project as a funded project, mm -hmm. the number, we got sticker shock. Yeah. I don't look at this as pulling the project. I look at this as a continued evolution of a concept. Um, and put that even further into context. The original CPA uh, was historic preservation, how affordable housing, and open space, full stop. They added recreation uh, in open space as a way of having projects that would help use the open space. But it's clear that they, one of the things that they had a high priority on is getting more green space. That's what the... Maintaining. Our version of that is the Sage Street lot purchase. It's one of the rare examples in the modern developed Norwood where there might be some quality green space that we could acquire and preserve as green space. The next closest thing to getting new land, it seems to me, is having uses of the land that do the absolute minimum amount of disruption. And to me, the trails uh, portfolio of projects, the vision, was that. It was, you, you have the same green area you've always had, but now lots and lots of people can use it and experience it all at the same time. Well, that's a huge vision. I mean, you, we've seen presentations with a dozen or more different spots around the town where trails might appropriately be put. So the question is, how do you start on it? And what we've seen over this past cycle, I think, is a series of ideas of how to define the first steps so they're bite-sized. The way we're leaving it now, I think, is that the first steps are outside the CPA process, but they're part of a larger project, multi-year project, that will come back into the CPA project process when it makes sense for it to do so, mm -hmm. at which point we'll have gotten the benefit of all the in-house work that um, Patrick and Paul and Mark and, and Andy are, are envisioning that they can do. And they'll learn more about that as they get into it. So the way I look at it is it's not a straight line path to where Trails Committee and everybody else is trying to get to, but it's pretty close. And uh, I'm, I'm excited about this. I'm not depressed or disappointed at all. Okay. Thank you. Sure. I have a 
I have a couple questions for you. At the bottom of it, it says you're pulling the CPC application, but you keep referring to the fact that um, you guys are able to do stuff in-house if hypothetically you get the St. Street lot. Where are you getting the funny funding <coughs> for that if you're pulling the St. Street lot? Because I know it's been common practice, like if DPW's done any work for conservation, conservation takes it out of their funding to pay for DPW. We don't expect DPW to put the bill on their labor and for materials. So I don't know in terms of um, whether implementing would be in-house, but in terms of uh, doing design and surveying, that's all stuff that would probably be done during regular working hours. Is that what you, so you, you mean like an actual, I lost it. Um, so you wouldn't be implementing, you would just be, do, you'd be laying the paper part of the groundwork yes. and then come back to the board to ask for the Tem money to implement. Yeah, okay. I, I, the, the whole, um, I guess the development of it itself, I'm assuming that be, that'd be something that would probably come through the CPA just because of, of how that would, you know, the cost would be and where we find that within the budget. But a lot of things in terms of just, like I said, in terms of surveying, in terms of um, design, um, uh, permitting, those are things that probably be doing just regular working hours, just regular part of the job. Okay, and then I ha Sorry, to that before you, all right, go ahead. On that same topic, or? Yeah, I'm okay. still there, but go on. No, I was gonna say some of the work, and I, I, I haven't been involved in those conversations either, but some of the work that, that the landscape architect submitted as part of their bid is work that's already being done on the St. Street lots, for instance, because it's already being surveyed or has already been surveyed. Um, and then some of the other work that's being done is being, is already, some of the other work that needs to be done is already being done and being presented to either the planning board or the conservation commission. So it's almost a byproduct of the current sale and evaluation process that's also could be used in laying out the property. So some of those things, we don't, no money has to be spent because the work has already been completed or is being completed. Okay, now I have another follow up. I don't have a problem with the pulling yeah. of the application because I think it would be the best benefit of this, the town as a whole that once we have our open space plan completed, mm -hmm. certified through the state, not only could we then apply CPC funding, but we could also apply for grant money and get more bang for the buck instead of just relying on one funding source you would be able to um, rely on grant money, which is like getting a freebie and it's the cherry, whatever, on top of this yeah. ice cream mound. So I actually feel it's actually in the town's best interest to go, okay, let's take a step back. Let's get certified through the state on our open space mm -hmm. and then go after that grant money because a lot of times the grants will say, well, where else are you getting your source of funding? And then the CPC is also saying, in the exact same breath, where are you getting your other source of funding? Yeah, yeah like, good, good that's point. 100% right. I mean, once um, we should have it done, I mean, I've been talking to Joe Sachi from NAPC, and he was sick for a little while, so we'll get hopefully a draft out there to the Open Space Committee soon. Um, that's gonna open up just just a, a, a ton of uh, grant possibilities and things that we really haven't um, been able to access because our plan's been out, out of date. Yeah. Um, so getting that done, I mean, there could be portions of projects that don't even have to, it could be all grant funded. So um, I think you're absolutely right, I'm waiting to get that done and then having the CPA um, uh, money as kind of like a, an additional source to that um, or vice versa. I mean, that's that's ideally what you want anyway for these projects. Okay. Good. Further discussion, Debbie. Uh, Helen, I apologize. I wasn't laughing. It's just we don't know. We all agree. I think that park uh, trails are like as I couldn't say it better than John are a big part and something we all want to do, but we don't know which way to go with it because we have more questions than answers. I think we all agree. So we're kind of stuck. Um, there's a lot of ways to go, but I think the green space 
and I, and I apologize, John said it best. You know, we all want to start little or do something. So the the momentum of what Terrell's committee has done and what Paul and Patty, you know. So I'm not sure, we're, we're all kind of in the same. We're not being coy, we just can't do step one and we're all, we're all kind of in the same, just sitting here waiting. So, But, but I think um, Helen also made a good point that semantics are important here. Using the phrase pulling the project sends perhaps the wrong message. Okay. And I think all of us have been trying to re-describe the same actions. I think, you know, both the Cheryl's idea about connecting it with other things that are going to come online but aren't online yet. This is what progress looks like. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's right. You know, you're exactly right. I mean, we're, I wouldn't say pulling the project. I would say just taking another approach. Um, and some things have to do with timing. I mean, the open space, in the open space and recreation plan done, it's, it, it, it's really key to a lot of these, um, a lot of these projects. Yeah. So. Good. Yeah. You know, just my thought on this is just the windows is too narrow right now to do it. Um, you know, and I, I, I think Paul's got a lot of priorities going on right now, and I just don't think that this is going to work out for this this cycle. Mm -hmm. And uh, I look forward to his seeing it again. You know, right. okay. So good, right. good. Thank you. Right. Okay, we have a motion on the floor, duly seconded. Um, yep. Good discussion. Thank you. Um, all those in favor of any further discussion? We're good. Um, all those in favor of the motion to uh, uh, formally re yes. Paul requests uh, to withdraw the CPA application with trail design, say aye. 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 All those opposed, unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for <clears throat> taking off this hat. Thank you for your kind words about the trail activity, and uh, you will hear more from that <coughs> trail committee. So. And house. Um, good. So thank you, Pat, for. Judith had her hand up. Oh, I'm sorry. Judith? Sorry, I missed that. I don't know about the plan now, but I was just wondering if it's possible to introduce uh, something for the trail screen, and that is to have the entrance of, let's say, University Avenue, not from University Avenue side, but from the Dollar Company Station side, because there is a lot of area for parking, and you can use the whole thing as its headquarters for the trails. Also, you can have um, the kiosk in, etc. So it's coming from the other side. Mm -hmm. Sure. Yep. It's, it's just one of the things. Um, Judith, just hold yeah, on. Wait one second. Second. This, this, <laughs> this, is on, this is on a timer. It's, it's on a timer, so it automatically goes up. So, but we definitely want to. We definitely want to hear what you have to say. So, please. Okay, this can combine with the trails, but is that property that is for sale, you know, right next to it? So is there a possibility that the CPA can um, purchase that property and use part of that area? I know it's wetlands and everything, but... And the, just for clarification, the property you're talking about is on Route 1 before the animal shelter? Can I On the same it? side? Yeah. Okay, good. Yes. Sure. Cheryl? CPC cannot purchase it because it's still before the Conservation Commission. Oh. Thank you. It's so still it's before a, the Commission. Oh, oh, it's a, oh, it's a project, an active uh, proposal? It's an active project okay. for the Conservation right. Commission. All right. Good, good idea, though. We, hmm? We're definitely looking to connect the dots and, uh, you know, just from a trail standpoint, we have looked at Beginning, beginning a trail at or near the animal shelter, and going all the way down University Ave to uh, where Granger is at the uh, Dedham right, Street the intersection, right? And it's about a four, just over four miles one right. way. So that would certainly be a great. Uh, and all the property, you know, where the Nala Pumpkin Station is, all in the back, it's beautiful. Mm, sure, right. It's absolutely beautiful. Right. Good. Thank you. Thanks, Judith. Yes. Um, good. Further discussion. So, um, 
So I think that completes uh, the portion of our meeting uh, relative to the public hearing. So um, we didn't motion. Oh yeah, sorry, good point. We have a motion on the floor, sorry. Sorry. Um, I, I think I said that. Oh, so all those in favor say aye. All those opposed. We already approved that. I already did that, but we did. Yeah. we'll do it. We did? Yeah. We did. Yeah. yeah. Motion to close oh, the public hearing. Now motion to close the public hearing. We did. Motion to close the public we hearing. We did. Second. Wow. Second. All those in favor? Aye. It's hot in here. Excuse me. <laughs> There's a motion on the floor. Just all those in favor of the motion discussion. say aye. 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 All those opposed, aye. unanimous. Thank you. Okay. Thank you all for attending our public hearing. More to follow at uh, town meeting. Thank you very much. Right. And moving into the rest of our agenda for the evening. A motion oh, to approve not. the minutes. We're not done. We have a set of minutes um, dated meeting dated February 27th, 2019. Um, we've got a motion on the floor and seconded to approve the minutes. Uh, all those in favor of approval, say aye. 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 All those opposed, unanimous. Thank you. Moving right along to item five. Um, financial review. Pat has provided us with a couple of documents here. Yes, you, you want to take off one hat and put on another and tell us what you've got? Yeah. Um, so many different formats. So, sure, please. So, I am. Um, St. Gabriel's Chamber. Right. Last week. So we're on this. this. We're on this. Oh, yeah. so, yeah. no, so following our previous meeting, um, there were some um, existing issues with our. Uh, I made that to the county department. Chairman uh, Grizzly followed up with the town county and the town treasurer. Um, we do, and we got that issue resolved. So, what you see in front of you, you see that our historic resource account is back. Um, the money for the chapel um, has been corrected in terms of where that was taken from. So, uh, that's good news. Um, there was an additional thing that I, I got this probably at the end of the day. And Joe, I don't know if, uh, if we want to even talk about this right now or it's something to kind of chew on, but it's Oh, okay. Can, yes. Can sure. I ask something on this? Please, answer? yeah. <laughs> Just curiosity. The historic has a higher amount than open space in community housing. Why? I, I supposed think, to be equally divided. Well, actually, it should be less than both, considering. We took well, money from yeah, this. but I think that was. Um, I think that's still money that was in the chapel. Um, are still money that was. It may be that but they then put it should all if the, the chapel, but they put it all back into. The yeah, I think that was what it was. Um, is it two years, one year? Right. It's not. This is. This is way too much money in the historical right. one because it should have been under the part of it should have been put back to the unreserved funding then. Because at the time yeah, when we it, voted, it, the historical part didn't have the money, mm -hmm. right. enough money in it. They only had a little bit. So, yep, it looks this is the first time I've seen this too, but I think John's point mm -hmm. there should be roughly 60. We, we had $121,000 between two years on the historical revenue. Yeah. That, that was our vote to allocate into those funds. We took $55,000 out uh, as part of the $400,000 for the chapel, and that should have left $67,000 like yeah. $67, in that account. So I think what is, what, it is, what is the case is that 67 of that is available for alternative uses, and then the other... Uh, I'll say 170,000 roughly is the remainder of the chapel money. So it's blended. It's still not right. It's it's righter than it was before, but it's still not accurate because it's now blending both it's available writer. funds it's writer. <laughs> and the remaining money in the chapel. Yeah, correct. Can we just keep an eye on oh, it, yeah. please? I would say a mix of that has to do with it just needs to be corrected, and then the software that we use in general. So, yeah. All right. We are. Yeah. Yes, we are because, trying to stay on yeah. top of it. We're, 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 yeah. Sorry, I'm just. No, that's right. I'm going to make a remedial, remedial math class. Down the list. We've been, we have been trying to get this corrected since October. Okay. Uh, all right. Any, anything else, Sean? No, I just okay. appreciate Good. it. That's all. Good point. Um, anything else on the trial and balance? So, 
So this is still a work in progress. It's still not right, but it's better than it was. Uh, the next document. Um, yep. So we've been in touch. Uh, I did speak to Mark Good in the treasurer's office. Uh, Mark has provided us with an update on the financials. This is slightly different, so we're trying to blend the trial balance. Do we have um, Oh, we're doing the small sheet now. The huh? small, yeah. CPA updates as of 3-7? Yep, so okay. Mark Good has provided us with this estimate of not only available funds, but he's got in here, um, he's got the fifth line up from the bottom, total estimated, nope, sorry, wrong one. Um, Actually, oh, at the, I'm sorry, the bottom line here, it says estimated FY20 revenue, 621000 So that's his estimate of what we will have oh. in um, town, town tax generated revenue for next year. For so CPA. That, for CPO, C, right, CPA funds, $621,000. So that's, that's not included in the trial balance. That's his estimate of what next year's revenue will look like. So, and then there's a couple of other, um, his numbers, you can see he's got a line item about halfway down that says reserved for historical through mm -hmm. 630, 2019. Mm -hmm. And you can see how it's six, roughly $67,000. Mm -hmm. So that to your point, Cheryl, that's what should be in that, to, in, on the trial balance. Instead of 243,000, it should say 67. And the difference is the remaining money in the chapel. Okay. Which is still CPA money, but it's dedicated to the chapel instead. Right, so this, this document. Get me there. How come? Oh, oh yeah, I'm going to be the devil again. How come Sorry. the numbers aren't matching, though? Minus the historical part of it, the other numbers are not matching except for the reserved open space and reserved community housing. But then right. you start looking at the rest of these line items and they're off. They should almost be identical. They should. Which numbers exactly from um, the trial balance to this? What, you're, they, sh they shouldn't be exact. We'd like them to be exact, but they should. <laughs> we'd really like them to be exact, but they're not because Mark, what Mark is trying to provide, most of his line items, it says through balance, estimated balance through June 30, 2019. Yeah. Right, as opposed to the trial balance is a snapshot of today. So it's as of, as of March. The trial balance is as of March 8th, I think, or 9th, in the top left corner. So yeah, this, is a, yeah. this is a picture of what's available in the accounts today. But what Mark is projecting here is money is still coming in for people to pay in the tax bills. So what Mark is projecting is this is what the number is going to look like at the end of June. So because of that, those these two things aren't the same because one is current and the trial balance is current and Mark's is a projection of what the number, what okay. he thinks the number is. Because there's more money here, less money here. That's what I'm trying to get at. Right. And, uh, and the more money in your left hand is because the chapel money is in your left hand because it still, it still falls under the umbrella of CPA money. But as far as Mark is concerned, it's not available going forward. Mark's assumption is that all of the chapel money, all $400,000 of the chapel money will be spent which we'll get to that in a second. Okay. Right. I'm gonna stay after class and have extra, because it's math, I'm, I'm. Okay, so, so the trial balance is current. Mark's attempt at projecting the end of the year is just that. We're off by about 85 grand. Well, he, he's estimating that, looking at the numbers, uh, he's got the cash balance at 762,000. And then he's anticipating receipts coming in, another 150,000 right. coming in. And then he's taking out our administrative cost, our, our 5% at 30,000. So then by the end, by the start of the next fiscal year, he's saying we should have $882,333.54. Right. right. Then adding what we just heard was gonna be the share for, from the state, 11.5%, 57%, that adds to almost 72,000 to that. Mm -hmm. The other numbers that are below that are the current 
what we have currently in our accounts. Right. So that's so. Right. I mean, it's Mark's has projections in his, but it also has what our current balances are. Right. So right. So those top five lines. Right. To that point, those top five lines are the top four lines. Um, He's estimating that <coughs> by the end of the year we'll have $882,000 available. And then in November of 2019, we'll get that other $72,000. That's the state match, yep. right? That doesn't come out of our own tax revenue, it comes from the state. So next year, when that money comes in, we'll have whatever, 950, roughly $955,000. Oh, okay, Mr. Director. But, but, that, <laughs> but that assumes which is still up in the air, that assumes that all 400,000 of the chapel is spent. So is this figure here with the 400 out of it, that 882, is the 400 out of there gone? Yes, yes. So it's removed off of that number? Yes. Yep. Okay. Yep. And it's removed out of that number. I'm sorry to complicate things. But it's not, what I'm saying, this is a true number minus the it's four. It's our cash balance. 400,000, okay. right. It's our right. cash balance. So that's, right, so that's basically, um, and then just let me carry it one more step if I could further complicate things. So we said 882 mm -hmm. plus the 72,000 for the state match. Mm -hmm. And then the bottom, at the, the bottom line there, the 622,000, at the, the last line on the page. Uh, yeah. Right, so that's what he, Mark is anticipating that we'll receive in town revenue next year. Okay. Right. So it'll be the combination of those three items the 882 plus the 72 plus the 621. Close That's how much money hmm? we'll have available for projects or not. Or not. Yeah, we're fine. Does it work? That's how much yeah. money we'll have yeah, going yeah. forward. Okay. Yeah. So they, these are definitely, it's a good point. These are definitely disjointed. This is, they, this is, this is the tough one to follow. They're not right. Yeah. Because this it's, is a tough one to follow. Because it's still not right. Thank you, right. Peter. Right? Yeah. yeah. Just throw um, it away. Yep. Put it away. Okay, John. Okay. <laughs> I, I can say this freely because he's not here to object, but <laughs> this is a good job for our treasurer. What I would like to see in the future is an integrated layout where one column is the general ledger, another column is the general ledger after you've corrected it for the chapel, another is the uh, general ledger with projections, and the last one is all of those combined. So you can see that the numbers, where they're talking about the same thing, they're using the same numbers. Mm -hmm. And where they appear not to be talking about the same thing, it's because something's being included on one and not included on the other. And we won't have to try to figure that out on the fly as a group exercise. I also would add that one of the reasons why the town adopted going to the Muna system is to have a better understanding of this, and so that, um, wait, like you're saying, in terms of um, the, the accounts and just having it kind of more readable and presentable, and uh, you know, better upkeep. Uh, you know, better upkeep. I mean, that's one of the reasons why switching to the newer technology will hopefully help that out, not just for us, but just um, in multiple well, ways. While we're waiting for. The I know, I know. Right. <laughs> it just seems like this is the sort of thing that John's good at. Right. And, right. and he'd be the logical person to lead that. You've been in, immersed in it, so you should be working with him, I think. Um, but it would make these discussions so much easier. Would I understand it? Right. Yes, well, so that you're writing it down. Well, not only, do <laughs> Thank we, you. not only do we need to understand it, our audience needs to understand it. Thank you. But the uh, meeting needs to understand right, it. We're going to be a little babbling right. in front of them about will, it. <laughs> right. So, yes. <laughs> If, I can, if, if you can get it so I can get it, everybody can get it. Two more, two more points. We had our March 27th, March 27th meeting. We absolutely need to have that in, those things in place because that March 27th meeting is where we're going to be voting where the money should come from to fund these projects that we're proposing to town meeting. So next, at our next meeting, we're going to be proposing all the projects and identifying where the, which fund those monies should come from. So all of the, everything that everybody has said has to be in place before March 27th. Yes. A question I got from a 
citizen today, and I didn't have an answer for it. We each get, each pot gets 10%. She's obviously watching the meetings. Each okay. pot gets 10%. Thank you for I watching. I said, yeah. Well, you've, you've um, discussed projects. Mm-hmm. So how much of the 10% is each of them reaching? And I went, we haven't decided yet. Can I call John? So let's say um, uh, the... You're jumping the gun. This is a good question for the yet. next meeting. Stay tuned. Yeah. Yeah. We That's a good question yet. for the next March meeting, not now, because what we're okay. going to do yeah. is, is stop moving the money around next meeting. Well, then you can tell who's going to have 10% and all that type of stuff. Okay. Right, but the 10% it, 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 I, the 10 going into the I would the just hold that for the next meeting. The 10% has to go into the... I, no, I understand that. I, it, so. It's just if, if, if uh, Parks had two projects and that raised... Okay, never mind. Next, we'll wait until next Friday. Hold that thought. Yeah. I was going to call you, John, but I couldn't get my no, phone out fast enough. Well, that's, that's okay. I, I, <laughs> think, <laughs> I think that question is actually easier to answer than some of the ones that we're going to deal with at our next meeting is that um, pretty much the 10% the pots are going to be fully subscribed uh, in historic preservation and in open space slash recreation and not used at all as yet in housing because we haven't had projects in housing. But all of the projects that we're funding are going to have to be tapping into the unreserved funds as well. And that's the part that I think your questioner may not have been thinking about when they posed the yeah, question. Yeah, take money out of the 65%. Right. right, but I didn't, but, you know, I'm not. Yeah, but that's. Nope. March 27th. Okay. We're going to be adding all this up. Yeah, can, can I, I, I got to do a remedial math. This is a meeting. You gave some numbers. Right. How, how much money? Right. Congress. Congress. And you said it was. Right. So we have to right. 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 Yes. 10% of that is $189,000. So there would be $189,000 in each of those accounts. Well, we haven't allocated the money yet. That's why. No, but you have to allocate. Go, no, no, but go, go no, I know, but we have to do what's, it. What's the next wait, step? Wait, wait, wait. In one, the one person at a time, please. Go ahead. But you have to allocate ten percent to each thing. So, right. So each pot right now would have, before you spent anything, one hundred eighty-nine thousand dollars. Up till right. now, this is what you said we had now. Right. We, we so, have to make a motion at town meeting to do the rest of that. So that's case why we only have one hundred twenty-one now. Because we haven't done the town meeting to do the second, the last third of that. That's when, when you get your 181000 We haven't done that town meeting yet. That's what will happen in May. But by law, you have and to put 10% into each group. We, we yeah. intend to. But you have to have a town meeting to do to it. Do it. Right. Yes. So that $1.894 million is after 2020's revenue, uh -huh. right? So you're right. So, so using that logic of three years, um, at the end of year three, at the end of 2020, the housing, the housing allocation, the housing bucket, if you will, will have 100, roughly $184,000. It's off a little bit because of administrative expenses. So 30, uh, roughly 5% or 30. That's 10%. Right. Yeah. So it's, it's off a little bit, but it, it will be trued up once we get the official revenue numbers. Right. So housing will not have touched any of their money after year, even after year three, so they will have 10% of that number. It's just the mechanics of we the timing have, of the, timing of the money. Yet. <laughs> right. huh? yep. We haven't got there officially yet. I see. So we have to do it at town meeting. It is. So, so there were two <laughs> we're more. Now. So there were two more pieces of paper in here, and just <laughs> bear with me. but. Um, I did speak to the chairman of the Permanent Building Committee uh, yesterday. Um, uh, Bill, Kin Bill Kinsman, the Permanent Building Committee meets every week, every Thursday. And at those meetings, they get an update from the uh, owner's project manager on the chapel. So this represents, this 11 by 17 document here, represents their current status, their snapshot of what's a, what, what the, the project status. So they started out in the bottom left corner. They started out with $1.7 million, 1725, right? Mm -hmm. They've spent or allocated the second to last column on the right. So they've spent or encumbered almost 1.3 million. So they have roughly $400,000 left 
436,000 it says, mm -hmm. right? I'm off a little bit due to my, round, my rounding. So they, so that's where they are as of this week. So they're roughly two thirds of the way through the project. This other document, Pat, did, did they drop that off or is that you? Yes, they both, okay. both these are from that. Okay, so this, so this is a full project outline as presented by the owner, owner project manager. Mm -hmm. What they also do have provided us, because I specifically said where are we, what they have also provided us is a snapshot of what's left what they what they read this one. Yep, this one. It's the top okay. top corner says Chapel of Saint Gabriel mm -hmm. Restoration. Mm -hmm. So basically that's their snapshot of all of the change orders that have taken place. But the bottom line is uh, it says remaining contingency as of this week, March twelfth, is forty four thousand dollars. So if the project finishes as planned and as they're managing, they'll have forty five forty four thousand dollars to turn back to us in money that comes back into the uh, CPA funding. So we gave them for, we allocated 400,000. Of that, they've spent roughly, you know, 356,000. So again, if the project ended, if the project ended today, we'd get $44,000 back to us, which Mark, Mark again, it, we got a dump, bunch of moving documents here. Mark assumed it, Mark, Goods projection that none of that money would come back to us, and now the PBCC is saying we still have forty-four thousand dollars that, as of this week, they think is surplus, and that money will be turned back to us. <laughs> and the timing of it, the timing of it is that will happen before uh, the town meeting, so we'll have a better picture of that. Helen, does everybody remember Yoki Gara? Mm -hmm. It's not over. Until it's, it's over. over. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, this is, this is. Uh, Frustrating and more than just disappointing because the last time we did have the PVCC in front of us, and at that time their estimate was that there would be 125, roughly 125 thousand dollars of surplus. So now I don't know three weeks or a month mm. has gone by, and basically 80 thousand, roughly 80 thousand dollars has been absorbed into the project. Mm. A lot of it, uh, this list. This, this list that they've provided is the list of all the change orders. So some of these they didn't know about at the time. Um, I remember the roof, at the time they were in front of us, um, the roof was a key point that was still up in the air, literally and figuratively and conditionally. Um, but that has gone, the roof is a, one of several things that has gone south, as it were, and has eaten up some of that surplus. But as of today, as of yesterday, the surplus was $44,000. So we're still staying on top of that, top of still staying in touch with the permanent guild building committee and trying to make sure that, you know, they know that we're overseeing the town's money. So. We were gambling people. We could have a lottery and raise funds. We, we could do that. We and could if do we're that. not, we'll get any money. So, the la so anybody have any other questions other than let's make it happen for next meeting um, relative to the financial review, but thank you, Pat, for bringing that all together. The last item on the agenda, initial town meeting discussion and article review. So I think that's basically what we've been doing for the last hour plus. Um, and then the second piece of that is at March, our March 27th meeting, we'll actually, basically we'll, we'll craft those motions um, based on the vote of how much money to spend, where to take the money from, how much money do we have? And uh, you know, we'll, at the end of that night, we'll have the majority of what we need to create the uh, town meeting warrant articles. Peter, do we have the up-to-date numbers from all for all the projects? So we'll make sure we can allocate the right amounts yep. at, as as it goes. So it'd be nice to have a. a just one sheet in front of us saying. And on their case, so I think those are the. Yeah. Right now. Well, yeah, all projects, and then we can figure out what, what we have to go forward with it as far as take, you know, so much percentage out, you know, so many dollars out and put it in there. Because okay. we're going to have to make a couple sets of motions here because we're going to first do our, take our 10 percents mm -hmm. and do those. And then we're going to have to go get the, what we need for the balance of these projects from. The unreserved bucket. Right. So, there's three warrant articles. One is, one is the recognition and the allocation of the revenue. The second article is the administrative expenses, yep. which is that five percent to just basically thirty thousand, peeling that off and putting it into the admin accounts. 
And then the third article, um, the way that we're looking at it right now is there'll be one article but several motions below it. And each one of those motions will be one of the different projects. So this document I passed out at the beginning of the meeting. At the bottom of this, this is my own, you know, go into the go into the room and close the door and how will how would those projects be allocated between the between the buckets? But that's the exercise we'll be doing next week. So the bottom five or six rows are um, the four projects we talked about tonight, excluding the Saint Lot project. So the four projects and theoretically how that how where that money could come from. So that, that portion of this spreadsheet basically is what we're going to be doing next week. She so wants to bring that sheet with us next you week. You could bring this sheet and, you know, just, you know, we can go over why, you know, strategy and what we're trying to accomplish. Um, we've got no projects coming out of housing. So at the end of the day, when the dust settles, they'll have their full 10% times three year allocation. So that's an easy one. And then we just have to figure out where to take the money, the rest of the money from. Yes. And John, me at the next meeting. John will be at the next meeting. Yes, Peter. Oh, just um, so the proposed allocation of the money for these projects, the four of them. That's just one article. It's it'll be part of it'll be four line items in one article, all right? It's four right. The capital project, capital L, they does it the same way. That it's one article that just says. Um, to, to see what sums of money, et cetera, et cetera. But, out of, but motion number one will be the Carillon and motion number uh, two. I hope we don't get into a half hour discussion about breaking up, you know, when we get into this with the capital outlay, we have one article, and then we know somebody even wants to combine them all to one article, then somebody wants to make sure they're all 16 different articles and, yep. uh, and all that type of I stuff. Think that's, that's the exact same question that I okay. had. In yeah. this and case, I think you're right, Peter. I think they have to be divided up because it's going to turn to, to confusion. Who thought of that idea? Which one? About putting all the four things under one. We can. <laughs> we that's, can. That's, we can do that. We can do that because it's been done by other committees. Yeah, but it doesn't work at town meeting. But, Everyone gets confused. But and the, then if I'm for it, I'm against it, what am I voting on? Then everyone gets yeah. nervous. Yeah, right. And okay. then they all vote no. That's right. right. Well, because that's we right. Don't know that. They all vote no. March 27th. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Sounds Any good. Further, further, John? Um, I'm wondering if we have some information we can include in our town meeting presentation about the possibility that one of our projects may become ready to be acted on at the fall of the town meeting. Uh, meaning the St. Street? Meaning the St. Street. Uh, the way just that to prepare them for that possibility. We will play that by ear based on the condition of that project at, and time of time at the town of time meeting. That would be, that will absolutely be a separate article because of the condition of it. Mm -hmm. And we will submit it as an article without the specifics, just so that it's printed in the warrant. But on town meeting floor, if, if we're nowhere near knowing the condition of the sale or purchase, then we're gonna remove it and you know, indefinitely well, postpone that, the article. That wasn't really my question. My question was, assuming we're in the position you just described, yep. yes. we might still want to make people aware that there is a possibility that a project will come up at fall town meeting, even though that isn't normally the way our cycle works. It, right, fall, fall as opposed to next you know, year. No, no yeah. action required, but just right. a, a piece of information. When we speak to the article and indefinitely postpone it, we will forecast that it will be back. Unless it, okay. unless it dies a painful death between now and then. Helen? Question, please. Yes. What about putting the article in? Is it is possible to put the article in that uh, we would buy the land contingent upon an agreement of a price no greater than X amount of dollars? Can that be done? I think that's a... Uh, that's I'm sorry? A, I think legal cons, you know. Yeah. I, we're, I, we're looking for guidance. I think it's a Dave's Could that be question. done, do you think? Then that way we wouldn't have to wait for town meeting. If we just got the agreement, we could just buy it? Well, we can park, from Stewart's presentation, we can park money into in a certain account. So we could probably do that, but I think, you know, it's an option right now. It's and a nice option. Oh, yeah, oh, I, I, I agree with you. We know we can do it. We know it's 
given the timing and it's the middle of March and But we, we have an eighteen month window too. Right. So, so we can't answer that question. Yes, yes, we can do it. How's that for a good answer? Do you think we yes. should? It's too early to tell. Yeah, we don't have enough information. If, if we get closer uh, to it being a real option to consider, we'd also have to consider that uh, uh, a lot of town meeting members are very uh, suspicious of underdefined <laughs> motions. As they should be. As they should be. Yeah. And, and mm -hmm. we could run the risk of poisoning the well for the ultimate decision by jumping too early. Right. Oh, he's Good. so smart. Good point. <laughs> Okay, further discussion? Um, okay, I'll end. Thank you. Motion to adjourn. Second. Thank you. Duly made and motioned and seconded. Uh, moved and seconded. Moved and seconded. All those in favor? All those opposed? Aye. Aye. I wanted to thank everybody for uh, joining us this evening. <laughs> thank Don't you. pan have, to the audience. We you won't fit them all in the camera. We appreciate <laughs> your input and continued uh, feedback. And I gotta tell it, you, the money stuff though. <laughs> yeah. Good. Good we're gonna have a, we're gonna have an after after class um, session because okay. all those John's in, gonna explain. All those in favor? Oh, we didn't thank, vote? All those in favor of adjourning? Say so, aye. 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 So moved. Thank you all for coming. Thank you for coverage. So after the march.